This podcast is presented by Zach Labs. Cosbot, the instant costume adhesive. Have you ever had issues using materials to build cosplay costumes, theater props, or everyday repair? We have the solution you've been looking for. Zach Labs proudly presents our latest product, Cosbond, the instant costume adhesive. What you get is a 8.5 by 12 inch sheet. You simply peel off both sides much like you would double stick tape. Except this isn't that. This is our patent pending microfiber infused adhesive that has a tensile strength of up to 100 pounds. This unique adhesive sheet is instant, and boy, do we mean instant. Activation is different than other products, as ours works purely by pressure. Simply peel and stick, applying even force, and it bonds. Instantly. It's human safe, non-toxic, pet safe, no fumes, and the best part, it won't ever stick to your hands. Rated for up to 75 wash cycles before starting to give. Great in the cold, rain, and even the heat. Stick anything to almost anything. Metals, plastics, most cloths, and best of all for all you cosplayers and costume builders, is all of your foam materials. While it does stick instantly, leave it alone with a bit of pressure for 24 hours and it cares to even stronger. So wave your magic wand and just use Cosbond, the instant costume adhesive. You are listening to a Dynamic Works Productions podcast. This show is available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio Network, and many, many more podcast services around the world. You can find all our content, music, videos, books, podcasts, and more on our website, www.dynamicworksproductions.com. Have questions, comments, or concerns for us? Head on over to the social tab on www.dynamicworksproductions.com if you'd like to talk to us. Now, on with the show. podcast. I'm your host as always, author, podcaster, gamer, Tim K. Trotter. Joining me as always is the one, the only, Mike List. Hey, what's going on, Tim? I am a little under the weather, <laughs> and it's not great. <laughs> no, never is. Never great being under the weather. And it's one of those things that's like, it's like, oh, I was fine last night until 7 p.m. And then you start feeling something's a little off, and it creeps up on you, and it starts gaining mm-hmm. momentum. And then you're like, oh, I guess I'm sick now. Great. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we have probably just asked tons of things to talk about this week. There was lots of stuff going on in the entertainment world, as everybody knows from last week's episode. Um, I attended PAX with my girlfriend for our it's, our, it's now our annual anniversary kind of thing. It's going to PAX. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, saw some things. Didn't play as many things as I would have liked but uh, I definitely played some things that are not available anytime soon and saw some things um I gotta say most surprising thing that I saw actually was the PlayStation exclusive title Dreams uh I I mean they didn't show at E3 and they had like huge things and people were playing it and shit and you probably have no idea what that is do you nope Okay. Do you know um you know Little Big Planet? Uh is that the one when you play like sock puppets? Yeah, and it's like two D yeah. but also like you can make whatever stage you want. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So this is made by the same team, Media Molecule. Um, and they've been working on this game since Little Big Planet three in twenty eleven. 
So they have not made a game in a long time. Mm. Um, they're owned by Sony, and it's a little strange because usually Sony kills studios if they don't make a game. Yeah, like they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't play that way. But um, so you know the you know the PlayStation Move controllers, right? Yeah, the the little the uh, weird numb not the nunchucks the uh, the weird uh, they got the the yeah. clown balls the glow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So dreams is basically like a mega evolution of little big planet where as opposed to creating in 2d you're creating in 3d and you can sculpt stuff kind of like clay with these move controllers but then you could like you could like make a cog and then like the cog works or some shit like it's some really out there shit basically but you can make things in 3d but then they're also games um but yeah not a lot of people played it because usually it's shown behind closed doors. So when I walked by the show floor and there's like a line, I saw mm-hmm. regular people playing it. And I was like, what? What's I, this then? What? They didn't even announce this. At, they didn't announce this at Gamescom. They didn't announce this at uh, at E3. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a game that uh, uh, Colin Moriarty, formerly of Kind of Funny, now of uh, Colin's Last Stand, and formerly of IGN, has famously said, this game is never going to fucking come out. I don't know what it is. <laughs> You know, and I was watching people play it. And I got to say, the thing that struck me about it was each screen had something totally uniquely different on it. Like one dude was playing like a platformer. One guy was playing like an RPG. One guy was playing like a top down shooter. One dude uh, was like on camera with probably one of the developers and was Mm -hmm. like sculpting like a face in 3d oh. and i was just like i don't know what all this is but it looks cool and people are playing it and people's got smiles on their faces so i'm gonna i'm gonna throw a wild um speculation out on it then that since this is the first time to my knowledge the public's ever played it mm-hmm. um i bet you it's gonna stealth launch at psx this year Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess. I mean, you know, I, I mean, you know what PSX I, is, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course I do. Okay, I, I don't. Just, you're yeah, just, I, you're just like, I guess, I guess maybe it's because you have no idea, right? About the, about the game, I didn't even know it existed. So yeah, I mean, so, it was one of the, it was one of those games that was shown as like a launch title mm-hmm. for PS4, and then just hasn't fucking come out. Oh yeah, you know. Not. Because what they're doing is completely insane and absurd. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean, the Switch has cardboard controllers, so that's kind of wild. So I'm mean, like, I... <laughs> that's a great, that's a great compa- That's a great, like we were saying pre-show. That's a great lateral movement there. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. It's like, well, people have cardboard controllers, so fuck it. <laughs> yeah, you, fuck it. Oh man, that's that's actually really fantastic. The way gaming is, it's you know, whatever works for you. Yeah, that's uh, that's for sure. Extremely fantastic. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess I'm already talking about pack stuff. Um, well, first of all, what did you do with the remainder of your weekend or uh, week? I guess I should say. What's what's been up? What's up in the world of Mike? Uh, worked and went to see the nun last night. Oh yeah, how was that? I saw your text. And I it was, was okay. Yeah, it was just okay. I mean, was it scary? I mean, it's jump scary, and I'm a mark for jump scares. Okay. So, I mean, I jumped, you know, even with the one that I've seen a million times, I'm like, okay, it's going to come, it's going to come. I'm not going to jump, and it happened. I'm like, motherfucker! <laughs> I mean, the yeah. the theater double sold the same seats, which was an interesting. What? Yeah. Yeah. Our seat was. Was, was it packed? No, no, no. We just. I guess what happened was because we did it online at the exact same time we clicked buy, they clicked buy for the same seat and the system didn't register it. Oh. And the guy was like, it's, it's, it's a freak accident. You know, we're sorry. And we're like, it's cool. I mean, you know, the guy was there with his girlfriend. They were on like date night and shit. And I mean, we were on date night and I was, I was like, excuse me, you're in your seat. And he was like, no, this is my seat, bro. And I'm like, no, I think it's my seat. And I pulled out my ticket and he was like, he pulled out his and I looked, and I'm like, holy shit. And he's like, well, like, we both got the same ticket. <laughs> and I was going to be funny and be like, okay, cool, check this out. 
you want to do lapses or you want to what do you want to do? And he was, <laughs> but we didn't. So you know, <laughs> went down went down in the lobby and was like, hey, and you know, hey, you, you double sold these tickets, and the dude was like, get the fuck out of here. And I'm like, mm. yeah, yeah, y'all fucked up. And he was like, <laughs> oh, we did fuck up. And I'm like, yeah. And he was like, um, is there something we can do? I'm like. I mean, we have a seat, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, pick a seat. And he just like pretty much printed out new seats for us, you know, in a, in, in another row, the yeah. same the same seat, but in a different row. And he was like, I'm sorry. And he was, and was like, he was like, I can give you free free passes or whatever. I'm like, nah, man, it's an accident. It's cool. But they were really apologetic and all that. So, way to go, Cinemark. Mm. That sucks. Yeah, but it was. I mean, like I said, it was a. It was, I mean, it, it had some freaky moments. There were some times that I'm just like, are you serious? Like, for real? That's what's going to happen? He's going to do that. All right. All right. I guess you want to go by yourself in some creepy shit, but <laughs> yeah. first rule, don't ever go by yourself. Oh. Don't ever separate if some creepy shit goes down. I mean, I guess, like, I mean, A, that's, that's, that's horror movie 101, but I remember seeing uh saw two by myself uh oh, I, yeah. I think i've talked about this this is where uh the lady there's like a bunch of teenagers behind me and then yeah. one of them threw up oh. and it like went down the step onto my shoe <laughs> what yeah i never told you about this i mean you might have why would you okay well, because because it's like torture porny is that why like i guess i, mean, I get it but sure I think what it was was, you know, it was Saw 2, not a terrible sequel, in my opinion. Have, have you seen the Saw films? Oh, yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, okay. So up, like Up until they stopped mattering, and then I stopped. <laughs> so, like, three or four? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Probably. Basically. Safe, safe bet, safe bet. Yeah, because isn't there, like, seven now? I don't know, I haven't seen... 66 of them, I guess? I don't know, I haven't man. seen the majority uh, of them now. That's the sad thing that's... to say, right? <laughs> yeah, a shit ton of Saws is what there are. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um. Yeah, no. So I was seeing Saw two, and uh, like uh, you know, I knew it was I was in for. I was like, all right, there's gonna be some torture porn. This is gonna be some scary shit, and uh, fucking Jigsaw is gonna fuck some people up. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I'm sitting there with my popcorn alone. Like I think it was Halloween week or whatever. And uh, I think, I can't remember whether it was, like, my friends were being pussies and were like, yeah, I'm not seeing Saw 2. Or if it was, like, people were just busy. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll fuck it. I'll do it myself. You know what I mean? We'll do it live. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there was some scene in a house or whatever. And there were, like, these three, like, teenage fucking tweens or whatever the fuck behind me. And they were, like, giggling and laughing and shit the whole movie, which was really annoying. And then I just remember uh, one of the girls going, oh, my God. And then, bleh. And then I, like, turn around because I'm, like, nothing was happening in the movie, like, after some gory thing happened. And so I was, like, that that throw-up noise was not part of the movie. And I turn around. I lift my shoe. And my Ugh. shoe is, like... And I and I look behind and I realize that she's thrown up and it has like gone um has gone like up, you know, like down onto my shoe. It's it's yeah. disgusting. She puked in your sneaker. I mean, it wasn't in my sneaker. Like she wasn't next to me. She was above me. Oh, so uh, And so it like I my get best guess is it like hit the back of my chair. Mm. You know what I mean? And then like slid down and you know how there's like steps yeah yeah it did that oh, fun yeah that was great anyways that's none of that's new uh, <laughs> so that's cool you saw the nun yeah. um did, did i did i ever talk about the the last movie i saw with, with uh movie pass did i talk about mission possible um i don't think i did not i don't think going cast i think you might have mentioned it to me like I've been... As a human, <laughs> yeah. If that makes sense, you know, not not on record, not being recorded, mm. off the record, as it were. I guess. Oh, I gotcha. I mean, because I was, I'd be into it. Because I mean, those movies are fucking great. Yeah, I'd say it's real fucking good. 
um like it uh mission possible fallout which is mission possible yeah. six seven ha- something like that it's up there ha- um, henry, henry cavill's in it right if i'm is yeah. that the one with henry cavill yeah i gotta say um trailers are misleading by the way really like on purpose oh um course. like there's definitely like action and he totally fucking breaks his shin um Oh, he broke his shit on that? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. You can see it in the trailer. He was, like, jumping between roofs, and he uh, misses the jump. And, smash, and his and leg smashes into the thing. And he fucking picks himself up and, like, keeps going. But you can see on his fucking face something is terribly not, <laughs> wrong. But they kept it in the film. You can see something that it's not a good time. He's not having a great day. Yeah, I think it, I think it was... Uh, I want to say Cruz had a statement about it. He was just like... No, I broke my shin. Of course it's in the movie. <laughs> like It was something real matter-of-fact, like, I broke my shin for this. Of course we're going to use the footage. I mean, you got to give the guy credit for that. You know, it was kind of like, um, I mean, it wasn't as bad because, like, mm-hmm. you know, Cruz went back to work and didn't have facial reconstruction. But um, was the thing in the, in the third Maze Runner film when Dylan O'Brien um, was jumping between Jeeps and he missed it and he slammed into a Jeep and then went under the Jeep? And then they mm. had to stop production for a year because he had to go get facial reconstructive surgery. Oh, you didn't know about that? No. Oh That's yeah, no. Yeah, that happened. That happened. You've seen you've seen the Maze Runner films, right? No. Dead silence. I'm gonna take that as a no. What ha- Wait. What happened? What do you mean? Oh, my mic all of a sudden just decided it wanted to go quiet. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't hear me. No, I could hear you. Oh. You couldn't hear me. I, I watched the first Maze Runner. Okay, well, so that kid. In the oh, third yeah. film, there's a, there's a, there's actually, it's like the opening five minutes of the <sighs> film. Uh, they're like trying to like heist a train, basically. Okay. And there's like Jeeps and they're in the desert. And he's like free jumping from like the hood of a Jeep onto another Jeep, you know, like usual movie stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Except in reality, he fucking mm. missed, Ugh. and the tow rope or harness got, didn't work. Oh, he got shit whipped. And so he smashed his face into the front of a jeep, and then he went under the jeep. Well, oh boy. And then got drug along with the jeep. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So he got. I mean, they shut down the whole fucking production. It was like it was like day two of production, basically. Mm-hmm. Like that movie, it came out at the beginning of this year. It was supposed to come out last summer. Like they. Yeah, they had to shut the whole fucking movie down. So you pause. Because the star... Got his face right over. Well, yeah, A, kudos to him for doing his own stunt work. But um, obviously ain't going to be doing that ever again. Um, But, like, no, he got, like, run over and smashed. And they had to, like... And, like, nobody heard from him. Like, nobody said whether he was alive or dead. Like, oh. PR was quiet as fuck on mm-hmm. it. Which was like, oh... That's not good. <laughs> Never. That tells me they did not know for a long time whether he was going to live or die. And then uh, last October, someone spotted him in a coffee shop, and he had, like, this giant, like, Jesus beard, mm-hmm. you know? And they're like, oh, okay, good. He's alive. <laughs> I guess if you get ran over by a, by a Jeep, you kind of want to take a little time to yourself and collect your thoughts. Oh, yeah. But, um... Going back to the whole thing and like Tom Cruise and breaking his leg, uh, the same thing with uh, Dylan O'Brien in uh, Maze Runner: The Death Cure, the third film. Um, like I like I, I own the film. I like the Maze Runner films. Mm-hmm. And in the commentary for that, he's like, "Yep, there's the scene." Oh really? <laughs> of course, I kept it. <laughs> uh, of course. It was like I was like, "There's no way in hell <laughs> you are cutting this this scene <laughs> where I get I, I get killed." And he's like, obviously, we're going to cut the part where blood splatters all over the Jeep and my face gets caved in. <laughs> hmm. But up nope. to that exact point, and with the power it's... of movie magic, he's like, yeah. we kept it in. So somewhat similar thing. I mean, Dylan's was way worse, but it was, I guess the, what I was getting at is the same mentality. You know, like, fa- I fucking bled for this fucking film. Yeah. You're keeping it in. You know? My favorite Tom Cruise moment was uh, the, the terrible mummy remake. Oh yeah, when he was like the, the the his like I don't remember the character's name, but his uh his sidekick was like the actor was like I'm I'm not I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. And Tom Cruise 
Tom Cruise like, no, you're totally gonna do that. Like, you're totally gonna do it. It's it's not that bad. You, you know, don't <laughs> don't don't be a punk. Come on, you can do this. And he's like, I I I, I don't want to do that. And Tom Cruise like, come on, man, I I climbed the Burj Khalifa. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Uh, his partner was uh, Jake Johnson in that, right? His buddy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's who. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Nick. Yeah, I wanted right. to say Jack Johnson, because I'm terrible with names. Yeah. No. No. That's not it. My Dunbar's number is full. I'm sorry. Yeah, that mummy was a weird film. Uh, it was definitely too weird for me. I I think the biggest problem with the mummy, uh, wasn't anybody's like acting or anything. It was the fact that like the story and the tone was all over the fucking map. Mm-hmm. It was oh, like yeah. it was like okay, it's Indiana Jones. Okay, he's a funny guy. Okay, no more jokes from Tom Cruise for this film. Okay, that's kind of weird. Okay, okay. He's, he's okay. He's a sex symbol. Jake Johnson's there. Okay, okay. Well, now he's not there. Okay, now now the mummy's a horror film. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, now it's uh now it's a science oh, yeah. fiction sci fi film with fucking Russell Kurt Crow Russell doing here. What's Russell Crowe doing oh, here? Oh, sorry, I said, I said Kurt Russell. Russell Crowe. Um, you know, um, I still, I, I did yeah. absolutely love uh, him and Tom Cruise throwing down when he was going all Jekyll. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I it was story wise dumb as fuck. Entertainment wise, I was like, I'm into this. I'm into this. <laughs> Weird film. Very sorry that the uh, uh, that was the director's debut film. Yeah. Did not do well. Yeah, you know the story behind that, right? Uh, was was he? He was handcuffed, right? Like, kind of. He had no choice, like no creative input. Is that? Uh, I mean, that's not what I heard. This, I mean, so the writer was mm. um, Alex Kurtzman, who is a famous Hollywood writer. He's written like fucking Spider Man's and Star Treks and Transformers films. You know, like big tier. He's written a lot of blockbuster movies, right? Yeah. And he was like, I want to direct. And so then the studio gave him The Mummy, and he also wrote it. So <clears throat> my guess is, um, you know, unfortunately, like, he he, sh- he went too big. <laughs> he went too big, and he went home. You know oh, what he I mean? Shot it, he shot his load. Yeah, he shot, like, he couldn't do all of the things, <clears throat> you know, because he was writer, director, and producer. Oh. Uh. Yeah, so I was like, that, yeah, that he, 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 couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't cut it. And that sucks, you know, cause it's like, he wrote a lot of really good films that I really love. Um, and TV shows too, that I love too, like, like fringe and shit, you know, but anyway. Oh, he I, wrote fringe. Yeah. He was a, he's a creator on fringe. Uh. So he did, he's done a lot of good stuff. Um, but yeah, muff to done that one. It kind of sucks. <laughs> kind of sucks. Cause it was a big muff, huge box yeah. office disaster. You know, and it's like, I mean, look at it this way. If you have a movie that both has a superstar like Tom Cruise and it's a famous old movie franchise like The Mummy, you know, you can't fuck it up. Like, and it bombs. I mean, that's, I'm sorry, Alex, that's on you. That mm-hmm. is on you, buddy. <laughs> uh, that is on you. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. where was I going with this? Uh, Mission Possible Fallout. It's fantastic. A lot of fucking action. I would say, um, I'd say it's true what they say that it's kind of like a, it's a mixtape of all of the previous stunts he's ever done, like mm-hmm. in the films. It's like, okay, here's the motorcycle chase. Okay, here's the car chase. Okay, here's the underwater thing. Okay, they're doing the the cliff thing again. Okay, there's a flying thing. Okay, there's like like, and it's just like boom, 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 like one after another, and it's like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of action in that film. Like, like there's so much action in that film, like, it needs to win an award for how much action is in that film. Like, it's it's pretty intense. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it is, uh... There's not a, uh... There's not a slow moment in that film, really. Um, and, and it also does really well in, like, tying back to, like, older storylines in the previous films. Um, like, have you seen all of them at this point? Uh, I've seen up to three. Okay, well, there's a lot of tiebacks to three in this okay. film, which I thought was really nice. It's like, oh, hey, that's cool. Um, so anyway, yeah, a lot of fun, great action. Like, there was a lot of like, and I guess it's a, and I guess one of the things is kind of different when seeing a Mission Impossible film versus like 
uh, like an Avengers or a Marvel film or something, you know, where it's like, mm-hmm. those have great action sequences, right? But, you know, 90% of it's it. CGI or wire work or whatever, you know? Yeah. Or is this like watching Mission Impossible and it's like, oh, Jesus, he's weaving really close to those fucking cars with that bike. Oh, Jesus, that halo jump is really fucking scary. Oh, yeah. Jesus, that's really, that's kind of like what you feel throughout the rest of the film. Cause it's like, Holy shit, what's he doing? Because it's, oh. like, it's like he's ballsy enough to do all of that stuff. And it's just mm-hmm. like you, you get that little tension of like, I know most of this is real. This is this is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> um, he, so anyway, Mission Possible. He's okay with this? He's okay with it? Okay, okay, okay. He's okay with doing he's, this. He's, okay. he's the one who fucking probably said it. Yeah, <laughs> he's oh, like, no, I'm sure. going to do it. And then they're like, really? And he's I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Tom Cruise, it's... I'm going to do a barrel roll. And you know he has in Top Gun. Yeah. And he'll yeah, probably, probably do another barrel roll in Top Gun, too. Oh, gosh. That's good. He has to. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know he's going to be flying that jet. You know it. <laughs> so, anyway. As much as he wants to. Um, I mean, he flew he flew jets in the first Top Gun. Yeah. So, I mean, why wouldn't he in the second one? I don't know. I'm gonna fly this. Uh, we we he's, really don't. He's gonna do it. He's like, no, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that's a cool story, bro. But here's what's gonna happen, okay? Uh, you're gonna move. I'm gonna get in this jet and we'll fly the fuck around. <laughs> and then everybody's like, well, I mean, I guess he's gonna fly this fucking jet around. Yeah, basically. Uh, okay, cool. So movies. That's good. Well, I might as well hit the hit hit the other. God damn it! I gotta bring up the Discord because I don't know what I'm saying. So, entertainment. Um, speaking of Henry Cavill, um, Netflix's The Witcher TV series has officially cast Henry Cavill as Geralt. No, I disagree. So I've not played The Witcher. Have you played The Witcher? No, I haven't. Okay. So why do you disagree? Uh, I want my boy a fan to do it. <laughs> Thane? I don't know who that yes. is. Yes. From uh Thane? Thane from, from Black Sales. Oh, Vane. Vane. Oh Bane, yeah, yeah, Bane. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. So Thane train, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh uh Zach McGowan. Yeah. Yeah, he's also in the one hundred. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So here's where I land on that, because I've not played The Witcher either, even though I own two and three and need to get to them at some point. And I don't really know this Geralt character, except, and feel free to tweet or tell me that I'm wrong and don't know anything about the series, because I don't, um, folks, at, uh, at GetForkPod or uh, uh, Tim underscore T on Twitter. Um, my understanding is he's a old, like, warrior who's, like, cursed with magic or whatever, and he's kind of like a Han Solo type. Is my understanding of this Geralt character? Uh, I, I mean, I guess. I mean, that's I, that's I, I my understanding. Like, that's my understanding. I always thought like witchers were a type of were like a a weird race. Yeah, I think they are, but he's like the last one. Yeah, I guess he's like the last Jedi or something, some shit. You know what I mean? Last. Samurai. Everybody tells me. I, everybody tells me I would love it, but I'm like, I don't know. Uh, I'm okay. Are you talking about the but, games? Yeah. Oh yeah. My I I think I'm gonna love it too. Uh. Uh, co-founder of the show, uh, Self-Made Dame, uh, he loves the Witcher series. And he says that uh, I will definitely love the Witcher series. I think he's got pretty good taste. Yeah. Um, but my back off on it is I know <sighs> both of those games, two and three, are Skyrim size. That's my back yeah. off. It's like, if I'm yeah. going to do it, that's, I'm 300, gonna go all that's 300 hours of my life. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, I'm going to do it when I'm not playing anything better or I want something... Deep in fantasy. I don't know. Maybe when I finish my Switch playthrough of Skyrim and I'm still hankering for some fantasy, you know? Yeah. I'll I'll dive in. Because I've, you know, I'll be honest. I've started The Witcher 2 on backwards compatibility on Xbox One, which is apparently the way to play it. Um, mm-hmm. And, like, and <laughs> this is the joke I'm clarifying. So there's, like, a little, uh, there's, like, a little movie thing you can watch. That like fills you in on the Witcher One story and the general story. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. it's like thirty minutes long. I never finished it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean by I've started Witcher Two. 
<laughs> I've seen most of that movie. <laughs> haven't haven't continued uh, past that point. But uh, anyway, my I don't I don't just like here's where I land on it. I like Henry Cavill. I think him being in a different role than a spy or Superman will be interesting to see him in. Because the only other movies I've seen Henry Cavill in are he's being a spy, Mission Impossible, or uh, what was it? That one he did with Army Arnie Hammer. Um, Fucking Agents of Hammer. Um, Man called like Man from Uncle. There it is. Okay. Man from Uncle. Say, I feel like I should know this. Yeah, and then Superman. So I only know him as either being. Goody Two Shoes, Boy Scout, Noble, or being okay. kind of like a like a dry spy that could obviously take your face off because he's shredded as fuck. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested in seeing him uh, from a TV perspective, see how he does in the TV world. And the other thing that I know about Henry Cavill is he's a huge fucking mega nerd. He famously missed missed the fucking. Um, callback from Zack Snyder that he got the part uh, in Man of Steel because he couldn't leave his World of Warcraft raid group because he was the healer. I mean, give the guy some credit. That's kind of cool. Yeah, the dude is like hardcore nerd, and he's openly said he loves the Witcher series, he's played all the games, and he's read all of the Swedish books. Okay, well then that's, you know, I'm not saying I wouldn't like him to be in the, you know, to be the character, I would have just preferred the, you know, the, yeah. the the actor I would like. But I'm sure he would do fine, considering he's played all the games and read all the stuff. So he's, you know, he knows the character. So yeah, that's fine. So from that perspective, real good fan casting. Mm-hmm. But I also agree with you, and I've not played The Witcher again. I keep reiterating this, but I've seen some videos of Geralt or Geralt or however you say his name. I think and it's Gerald. And the dude is fucking Captain Vane from Black Sails, the Zach yeah. McGowan guy. Because Zach McGowan's ripped as fuck. He's got the long hair. And even though he's young, he looks old. And that's one thing that Geralt does look, is he looks old. And he's got white hair. And Henry Cavill doesn't look old. I, think, I guess. I think it's, I think it's his magic. Uh, yeah, and also, may I reiterate, I'd never play the game as well. Uh-huh. So I don't know. But I think it might be the magic that aged him. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of a classic fantasy trope. Yeah. Really. Yeah. The magic taxes your body and whatnot. Yeah. I don't I don't really have a problem with that no. particular thing. Um, okay, so moving on to some sad news. And this this kinda hit me hard because I'm actually a, a big fan of this band. Um Mike, what's your thoughts on the band uh the cranberries? Uh, means who doesn't like zombie? I mean, true, true. I mean, I know that the lead singer died. Yeah, so and, uh, lead singer Dolores or Rodian has died by drowning, which is a terrible way to go. Yeah, which is, is, my, the worst. is my understanding. Yeah, it's not that great. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Um, apparently. Uh, wait, hang on. I'm trying to pull up the article on what exactly happened. Um, thanks. Wow, my post on our own Discord was really shit. That did not give me information. Cranberries singer drowns. Um, oh, well, that's somewhat sad. Okay, so apparently she accidentally drowned by passing out in her own bathtub um, by getting uh, wasted drinking. Oof. So, drank, wasted, in a bathtub, apparently filled with water, knocked out, so, blackout drunk, drowned. Yeah. Wow. That's a terrible way to go. And it sucks, because uh, I thought she was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, the there's a band named Bad Wolf. Yeah. They they did a cover of Zombie. Did they? Yeah. Cool. It, it's really it's really good. Nice. I'm actually gonna write that down because 
I love that fucking song. Yeah. He said it was Bad Wolf. Bad. Yeah. Bad Wolf. Zombie. Zombie cover. Okay, cool. Yeah. Also, um, a rapper, Mac Miller, died the other day. Okay. I mean, I know you're not really into hip hop, but yeah, I am not. Still sucks when I think it was like 26, 27, maybe. He was, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's super young. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, drugs. Yeah, I mean, it, it does suck. It, it, it also really sucks, especially when like people are like famous and like good at something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like, uh, one that was close to my heart was the, was the Lincoln Park suicide. Mm, that yeah, one, Winchester. Yeah, that one cut me deep. That one cut me way deeper than any of those, um, you know, emo songs yeah. did. <laughs> when Chris, uh, Chris Cornell was a rough one, too. I, I don't know that one, but I'll take um, your word for it. From Soundgarden and Audio Slave. Oh, right. We've talked about that before. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've heard him. He's good. That sucks. Also, Burt fucking Reynolds died. Yeah. What the fuck was up with that? He was 82? I yeah. I like, mean... That's not even that old. Hard fucking partying, dude, I guess. I mean, let's be honest. A bunch of those old Hollywoods. You know yeah. they did. You know they oh, did. Oh, yeah. Partied. Like, I mean, it's like it's like the only reason Jack Nicholson is still alive is because uh, the mixture of drugs in his body has not uh, sufficiently gone through his liver yet because of the backup waiting to get through. Like um, him and who? Oh, God damn it. Uh, Keith Richards. Yeah, Keith Richards. Keith for, Richards has done so sure. much drugs. It could kill everything. Yep. Yep. It's true. Or. uh I guess uh, the the alcoholic levels of Johnny Depp and apparently Ben Affleck. Really? Yeah. Did we not talk about that last week? No. Well, we didn't talk about Johnny Depp, but so Ben Affleck entered uh, into uh, alcohol rehab uh, like a week ago. No, bats. No. Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, wow, I actually wouldn't have guessed that one because it's I mean, like I Johnny could... Depp. You can fucking tell. Yeah, sure. You can I mean, tell. It's, it's pretty much needed. You as, know, it's as one a, it's alcoholic assumed. to another, like, you can tell. <laughs> but Ben Affleck, man, I would have never guessed that. Like, that's, uh, that was shocking. Yeah, not in a million years. That's ridiculous. But, that's crazy. Yeah, no, it spawned this meme that is kind of a funny, sad, but true kind of meme where it's like, uh, it's that scene in Batman v Superman where uh, he's Bruce Wayne and he's pissed and he's looking at his Batman suit like he's got to suit up again, uh, you know, and he just looks like filled with rage. And then the yeah. caption on the bottom is like, you need to find someone in your life the way Ben Affleck looks looks at his addiction. Mm. <laughs> it was like, oh. oh, damn, deep cut. <laughs> Savagery. Yeah. But it was an interesting take because they're like now it, it ironically spawned this whole string of fans that are like, well, Ben Affleck's probably approaching the Batman role from an addiction side. And who knows it better than an addict? I mean, look at Robert Downey Jr. And even cool. though they kind of shied or shooed the alcoholism of Tony Stark away from by Iron Man 2, um, you know, you know, sure. he played that for real. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> for real. So yeah, I don't know. A lot, a lot of, a lot of death and weird shit this week. I guess. Yeah, it's 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 actually very weird. A lot of death. Yeah. So, uh, I guess in technology news, um, uh, there was um. Or is uh, there'll be a, an Apple press conference on September twelfth? I'm sure all the new uh, iPhones and whatnots and possibly iPads will be announced then. The one thing that's almost a guarantee though is a brand new Apple Watch with a bigger screen size. Uh, and the reason we say that that's a guarantee is because I guess in the software development kit for the Apple Watch, 
they're now showing a different screen resolution mm-hmm. that's about 20% bigger. And, wow. it's, and it's like, okay, that's not surprising. So um, expect uh, Apple Watches with bigger screens, which is kind of what I'm waiting for because my Apple Watch has been sitting dead for over a month and a half now. <laughs> and it's like, I'm going to wait to the new one. <laughs> I saw a guy tweeted out, he was like, uh, Apple's pat- Apple patented the, a design for a foldable smartphone. Oh, yeah. And he was like, like it to or not, if Apple says we're going back to flip phones, we're going back to flip phones. I mean, not wrong. It's, no, it's there's not only wrong. so much you can do if you're a market leader. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, when they got rid of the headphone jack, which I Fucking still a, don't man. like. I still I'm still not in agreement with that decision. I understand all of the technology reasons why it was removed and why digital headphones are better because they definitely are better. However, it's real fucking annoying to me that when I go to play my Switch in bed, I have to break out my old Apple headphones because the Switch doesn't have a fucking lightning port. Mm -hmm. But you can't say that they were wrong because every cell phone in the industry moved to USB-C headphones with the exception of Samsung. So... Tomato, tomato, I guess. Sure. I mean, the fact that I have to buy a dongle kind of sucks, but... I mean, they always... At least to be fair, the dongle was cheap as fuck, and they gave you the dongle. You know? I, I, no, I mean to have two ports. Oh, yeah. 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 To have, so I can charge and listen at the same time. That's what I meant. Oh, you're talking about that problem. Yeah, oh, okay. that problem. Yeah. I mean... That definitely that definitely affected me when I switched to my X last year because I had always had a headphone port and I'd always mm-hmm. charge my phone under my pillow and you, and I listen to shit to sleep. Yeah. But what made it better was that my battery life didn't suck anymore. <laughs> so I still listen to headphones with night and then yeah. my phone's still good to go in the morning because the battery life is just so infinitely better. So... It's kind of been a non-issue. But you know what? You know what? Uh, uh, Jessica actually does. She has a splitter, which I didn't even know existed. She's mm-hmm. got a thing, and it's got, you know, one lightning port in, two lightning ports out, so she can charge and listen. Even yeah. though, um, I guess, no, I take that back. She, did, she does have an iPhone 7, so they don't have a, they got rid of the headphone jack on that one. Okay, never mind. I'm talking out loud here. Um, <laughs> so anyway, expect all sorts of shit probably for me talking about it because I'm the Apple fanboy um, on uh, next week's show. Um, surprise stealth launch. Um, Blue, which has now been acquired by uh, Logitech, for better or for worse, mm-hmm. um, announced the successor to the Yeti. The blue has a Yeti Nano. It's a smaller version with uh, basically all the same features. They dropped two of the mic arrays, but it has all of the same inputs and outputs. Um, and it's about three quarters of the size of the existing Yeti. Uh, and it's a hundred bucks, which is like, yeah. damn. Fucking, well, that's replacing the snowball. Um, I mean, I guess not really, because you can get a snowball for like, was it 80 to 60 bucks? I got mine for 50. Oh, okay. Do you have a but snowball yeah. or do you have a Yeti? I have a snowball. Oh, okay. So you're using a snowball right now? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. I don't know. It was interesting to me because um, I, when I was at Best Buy getting um, a case uh, for my, my Jessica's iPad, um, I saw they had a they had a setup of a bunch of blue mics. You know, they had the Yeti. And they had, uh, they had some of the smaller ones that are, like, way too expensive. Um, but they had this one called the Raspberry that I really liked the look of and the features of. And I was watching some video reviews of it, and I was thinking, man. Because eventually I'm going to have to get more mics, because either this one's going to shit the bed, or I'm going to need mics for uh, a new mic for myself, one mic for Jessica, and I'll need to get a mic for Brock for our Pathfinder podcast, mm-hmm. Working Your Path. Um, which, status update on that, uh, by the way, Mike. So the feed was validated. It was submitted successfully. But okay. It, but it was kicked back on an email 
I tried it three more times. I was like, WTF. I emailed Libsyn again. They got back to me this morning, and they said that um, I- iTunes is currently having uh, some kind of issue with the Libsyn submission fit system, and they're aware of the issue, and they're trying to correct it. Oh. So we're real close. <laughs> we're closer than we've ever been. There's going to be a lot of episodes dropping all at one time. I mean, it's just going to be... Uh, it's just going to be a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the news is mostly good. <laughs> but uh, anyway, regardless, I'm thinking in the future, it's like, well, I might go get a raspberry for myself and then maybe like uh like a yeti nano for Mm -hmm. jessica and brock because it's like it's you know it's cost effective and you know blues products are fantastic and they last you know i know they're gonna last you know what i mean yeah and uh because like my fucking yeti has put up through some fucking abuse it's been dropped kicked fucking rolled around fucking everything under the sun i don't, I don't know dropped, how... kicked, dropped and kicked it has literally been dropped and kicked <laughs> i kid you not oh uh, no um has your uh how long have you had your snowball oh uh, it's fine it's sturdy i mean it's... no I meant, I meant how long how long yeah. ah fucking a year yeah yeah has yeah, Pete knocked since... it over uh yeah oh yeah 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 and it's like a champ right yeah yeah he thinks that like when he first saw it, he was like oh that's my ball and i'm like God, <laughs> and you're like no 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 go ahead and back that one up there there's chief yeah, but how about have a big no there buddy yeah but i mean he's you know yeah it, it's taken falls it's taken yeah the thing i mean they're sturdy they're meant to last so oh yeah 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 they're built out of I mean, I think. Well, does the uh, does the snowball is it all metal or is there some plastic? I mean, it's like a little bit of plastic, but it's mostly metal. Metal, metal mesh in the front and back. Because mm-hmm. I guess it, it could be omnidirectional if I said it that way. Yep. You know, a little stand is fine. Yeah. Okay. Right. Ever since the seventeen dollar wonder shit the bed on me that one time with it, it was the episode that um. It sounded like I was an anthropomorphic dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I said it best ceiling. because it made you laugh, and you kept talking about how it made you laugh. It was, uh, uh, it sounded like you were underwater talking on the radio channel of, like, an X-Wing fighter while yeah. having interference from, like, the Death Star battle or some shit. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was something. Yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a very interesting, like, yeah, the analogy you made. That was, that was when I did it. That yeah. next day, I went out and got a snowball. Nice. Well, uh, in the future, uh, now you've got a now you've got a you've got a cheap upgrade alternative. You know, um, I've looked at the reviews, and the reason I said it was a stealth launch is because it's available right now, and apparently all the major tech companies have already reviewed it. You know, I googled it on YouTube the day it came out, and I was like, oh, people have already reviewed this thing, and uh, it's every bit as good as the regular Yeti. Uh, the only difference is you lose um, two of your mic patterns, um, and then it has an adapter for the bottom for the standard, um, uh, uh, you, you know, the pipe threads. Oh, to yeah, connect okay. to the thing. The connect the, the the stand. Yeah, I'm I'm terrible with talking right now. I'm just trying to trying to muddle through before my <sighs> fucking voice before hits the bed. <laughs> I say before your body shuts you down. I mean, I'm. I mean, anybody who can hear, there's like some metal clanking and some chugging. I've got this giant jug of hot tea next to me, and I've been chugging it, kind of in between. Usually, whenever you talk, I'm chugging something. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, uh, it's out, and it's. Um, I guess the, the the thing to kind of communicate to our audience about it is the hundred bucks. Um, it's every bit as good as the voice quality that you hear me speaking with. Uh, it's blue. Me and Mike swear by them. Um, and it's really small. So if you want to set it in front of a table or even a little mic stand for streamers and stuff like that, because the Yeti is also a popular streamer mic, um, you can do that too. Um, and it's small and cute, and it, apparently it's real good. Yeah, well, I don't know. It does. I'm I'm not gonna not I'm not gonna not 
um, pimp blue because blue's been good to me. Um, do you have any technology things to bring up? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Never do. <laughs> okay. Did you have any entertainment stuff to bring up besides none and Burt Reynolds? Uh, none, Burt Reynolds. I don't think I got anything. I know. Oh, Kevin Smith lost like 70 fucking pounds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen the pictures. because yeah, He pounds. looks like a different person. Oh, yeah. There was a funny... T- um, this, Some girl tweeted that she got a, a Jay and Silent Bob a tattoo. Yeah, the, the, yeah the, the, they're, they're like just them, right? Like a, like a silhouette. Yeah, a silhouette. And then uh, people were kind of shitting on her because they were like, maybe you should have waited until he lost all that weight and you wouldn't have had to pay so much for ink and i was like wow that is some comments right there I mean, that's that's the iconic him you know so I can yeah understand but that. i mean to be fair like he had to like yeah. it was not an option he had a heart attack in the thing called a widow maker yeah right that's a goddamn gunslinger nickname yeah yeah but i mean if anybody would have one it'd be kevin smith right for sure yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, he's crazy skinny now. When you hear the story about how he was so high, that's what kept him alive. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I was very high, and it kept me very alive. True. You know, he keeps teasing that um, he's got some sort of big media thing on the lines, and he was saying that whoever... If they actually let him do it, he says, A, it'll be stupid on them their part because, you know, he always likes to knock himself. Mm-hmm. Um, but he says it'll be the biggest media thing he's ever done. And I'm kind of thinking that it's gotta be it's gotta be something Batman related. Whether it's like an animated film, uh maybe he does a Batman TV show or some shit. Maybe he does a run. Yeah. Like a comic run? I think he's done a comic run. Uh, he's done The Flash. No, he's done Daredevil. He's done he's done Flash on TV. He's directed a couple episodes. Okay. You know, he's written comics. Like, he's comfortable writing comics. His concern is, like, he says he would be so meticulous if he ever did a Batman thing. He's like, you have no fucking idea. <laughs> like, he says, no you, fucking idea. he's like, I fucking love DC and I love The Flash and they made me so welcoming and all that sort of stuff. He's like, but you have no fucking idea what it would be like he's like i would like nothing would be good enough (laughs) in batman (laughs) so i love i love love his podcast oh yeah he's great i mean i don't listen to very many uh i mean other than like now that's a dick slinging savage right there yeah for sure for sure batman on batman that's one of the greatest yeah i mean i guess it's one fat man on batman now oh yeah i guess it is (laughs) (laughs) former fat man on batman yeah yeah that's true Fit man, fat man, or Batman. There, there you go. go. There you go. Exactly. I mean, as New Jersey native, you know, got to support. Oh, yeah, that's our... right. You got you I've, got you guys in your heritage. I've been to Secret Stash. Oh, okay. And I've been to the comic his comic store, and it is literally a love letter to comics. I believe it a hundred percent. The way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, switching over to life stories. I've only got one this week. Um. And I guess it's not really relating to my life other than, I mean, PAX. We'll get into PAX, and we've got a ton of video game stuff to talk about. But I thought that this was uh, rather crazy. So Saudi Arabia declares online satire a punishable offense. Mm-hmm. What? So they yeah. said um, satire that disrupts, disrupts public order, you can get up to five years in prison. And uh, they go in to say there, says, producing and distributing content that ridicules, mocks, provokes, and disrupts public order, religious values, and public morales through social media will be considered a cybercrime punishable by a maximum of five years in prison and fine of three million riles, which I guess is $800,000. Um, yeah, that's crazy. That's nuts. So... Um, like, I don't know. I, I don't live in Saudi Arabia, so I don't know, know the fucking climate there or any of that shit. But didn't they didn't they give citizenship to a robot? 
Were they the ones that gave citizenship to a robot? It was it. Well, oh, I mean, it was fuck, that's a good the, one, Mike. Or was it the UAE? Uh, you United uh, Arab Emirates. Yeah, I don't remember. Do not remember. Okay. Well, well, from now, just just for the 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 sake of the bit. Yeah. I can't say you fucking suck on on Twitter, but you'll give citizenship to a robot. <laughs> I mean. I mean, I, I feel like I have no further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> I, I feel like we live in a Cohen Brothers. I mean, you know, I feel like we live in a Cohen Brothers uh, yeah. movie. Uh, uh, yeah. You can't say you can't say suck my dick or my balls. I'm, I'm working for NASA and keep your NASA job, <laughs> but you'll give citizenship to to a robot. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. I... <laughs> I get, I get what you're saying. Oh, All right, cool. I'm with you. I don't, I don't, I don't get it, man. Like, yeah, I don't get it either. The fact that that girl was so excited about her job, and that fucking that Donald Downer was like, I work for NASA. I work for the committee that that does NASA. It's like, oh, cool, suck my dick. You even more so, sir. You know, it's, 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 I, I, I just like. Stopping expression is is like a nightmare to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I mean, I you know, I will I will let you have it if if need be, and and everybody is well aware. People know that for a fact. Like, oh, yep, no, nope, there goes there goes Mike. Gonna let somebody have it. But it just it just gets me. It just gets me. I'm sorry. I don't want to get on like a rant. So, not gonna do it. Mm-hmm. No, you can. You can lose your job for a good ass joke because I'm gonna be honest with you. When a girl says, "When a girl says suck my dick and balls," it's hilarious. <laughs> I agree. It's I agree. fucking hilarious. I agree. I do. Oh. I agree. Okay, so getting onto video gamings, which I guess kind of rolls into life stories and stuff. Uh, PAX. So I played and talked to the developers for a good while. Uh, this game that I've been really looking forward to um, that actually uh, started as a Kickstarter project. Um, it's a game called Pray for the Gods. Um, and it's basically a modern, new Shadow of the Colossus game. Yeah, I saw the, um, the, they, they put like the first 15 on... Uh... On net on not Netflix on uh, <laughs> on Netflix because I'm stupid. <laughs> on um, god damn it, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, they put the first they they put the first little bit on on YouTube, and I'm like, oh well, this is just amazing. Oh yeah, how yeah. many how oh. many people do you think made that, Mike? Uh, not many. Well, take a guess. Uh, less than fifty. I'm I'm guessing. You are correct. You ready for the number? Sure. Three. Three? Three motherfucking people, and I met them all. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah, because they were running the booth, because that's what they are. <laughs> three. Yeah, three fucking people. That's astounding. I know, right? To be oh. fair, those three people have, uh, have been developing it um, part-time since 2014 mm-hmm. and then in 2016 uh they moved to seattle actually they came from san francisco um and uh they've been working on the game full time since then so i played the game played it extensively actually um talked to them at length about everything mm-hmm. um so they're going to have a a open alpha on PC in December, and then they said uh, actual release of the game plus PS4 and Xbox One release. They're gonna uh, launch simultaneously. They said it will be about six or nine months after that. That's pretty cool. So let's see what's nine months after that. That's so September October ish of next year. Mm-hmm. Pray for the gods will be available. Um, on PC and Xbox One and PS4. Um, and uh, to also... 
uh, sort of communicate about the game since I've, I've played it. I, I played it with a, I played it with a fucking PS4 controller, actually, uh, which I was quite surprised guy because usually, usually when you're playing these games that are like really early development, uh, usually it's always like a 360 or an Xbox One controller because they don't have yeah. to fucking figure out the drivers or some shit for it because it's usually running on a computer in a box. Mm -hmm. you can't see the system you're just kind of holding the holding the sticks going oh this is great yeah no this one's actually on a ps4 um i don't remember if it was a regular ps4 or ps4 pro uh it ran great um something that kind of surprised me uh which didn't really have anything to do with the three three guys it was the studio they outsourced it but the music really fucking good like full orchestral choir all that sort of stuff everything epic um the thing, the things that are going to set it apart from Shadow of the Colossus, which I didn't know was in the game at all. Like, I thought it was just Shadow of the Colossus. Like, big-ass area. Okay, it takes place in the snow. You fight these things that are totally not called Colossus. <laughs> Winky wink. Um, and uh, you stab them in their fucking weak points, and they fall down, and you feel awesome. Right? Because that's Shadow of the Colossus. Mm -hmm. um, what I didn't know is that it's also Breath of the Wild. Oh. Uh, you can climb anything, Breath of the Wild. Uh, you have chopped down trees to make a fire to heat yourself. There's a whole survival mechanic. You have to hunt deer and animals to stay alive in the frozen uh, island that you're on. Um, and there's like a whole like heat food starve meter thing, which I didn't even know was in the game. And I was like, oh. Well, that's cool. I'm down for that. Um, and uh, they've got... Um, uh, they've said that there's going to be no um, like voice acting or anything like that. It's going to be told purely through uh, paintings and stuff that you see on the wall. Like the opening area that you start in, at least in the demo that I played, uh, you're like in this cave and there's like these cave paintings of like mm -hmm. maybe what happened, like either there's a curse or something angered the gods or something like that. Something like that. I don't know. It's all kind of vague in a good way though. And, um, uh, pretty much immediately after that, you get uh, a thing that's definitely <laughs> not in breath of the wild or shadow of the Colossus. You get a fucking grappling hook, which is fantastic. Kind of dope. Yeah. Um, the interface is real clean. Uh, it controlled real, real, real well. I only had, uh, encountered one bug. Uh, on the on the creature that I was fighting, it was kind of this, I don't know, bird, human looking, walking skeleton, witchcrafty looking thing. Um, it uh, it felt good. Uh, the controls were good. the The camera was actually good. Usually, cameras in these games this early are pretty shitty, but it was pretty good. Um, climbed it up. Uh, felt very Shadow of the Colossus-y, but it also felt. Uh, more modern, I guess, in some areas because it's, you know, Shadow Class is an old ass PS2 game. This is a modern yeah. game. And that was one of the things that they kept stressing to me was like, yeah, we really want it to be a modern Shadow of the Colossus because they haven't done a Shadow of the Colossus 2. So we're like, let's do that. You know, so that's why he's like, yeah, you can climb everywhere. You know, so just like Breath of the Wild, you can run straight to the final boss if you want to. You're going <laughs> to die, but <laughs> you can do it if you want to. I don't suggest it. Yeah. Um, they've said that um, the world is going to be pretty big and mm. uh, that there will be five gods or giant monsters in total. And they said at launch. They said really. Um, they said part of their Kickstarter stretch goal is uh, after the game launches and if it's successful, they have tons of ideas to do a ton more uh, creatures, but they're going to focus yeah. on that chunk. Um, and then also making the world and the uh, survival mechanics really interesting. Um, and uh, it, I was, it, was, it was real good. And one of the things I asked them, because the game is built on um, one of the more popular game engines, Unity, and I was like, so how demanding is this game? Could you put it on Switch? Because there's a lot of Unity games on Switch. Mm. And he was like... He was like, I would fucking love to put it on fucking Switch. He's like, can it run it? He's like, maybe. He's he said he said probably the biggest challenge were because they have realistic snow. 
in, oh, yeah. in this game is they have like you know like crunches and moves and whatnot, and they've got like fur physics, and he was like that those are pretty taxing on the CPU, and he's like mm -hmm. it's like I'm not saying it's impossible, I am telling you I would love to do it. He said but right now. We're three dudes, and we're launching on three platforms. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, okay, fair enough, fair enough. A dude per platform <laughs> is what it breaks out to? Uh, not really, actually. Yeah, if you count, yeah, PC. Yeah, so, yeah, but that's not actually how the development is structured. So the guy I was talking to, he was the, uh, he was the art director and character designer. And then there was uh, one dude who was the uh, coder programmer, and then there was, like, the engine programmer guy. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. That was the end of that one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, look forward to pray for for the gods. Um spelt P R A E Y because Bethesda Xenomax Studios decided to fucking get all anal with them and said mm -hmm. that they couldn't use the the name Prey, even though the, the title is Prey for the Gods, because they have their game Prey, so they had to change it, which is dumb, but whatever. Yeah. Yes, it is dumb, but <laughs> if you had a game that has, you know, because then you, people would shorten it and be like, yo, you playing, you know, you playing Prey? Yeah. So, I mean, I know my buddies and I, when we when we played Shadow of the Colossus, it was like, yo, you playing Shadow tonight? Mm, yeah. And that was like before Twitch. We would go over. That was when we used to go over everyone's house to watch them play to play a game with them. Yeah. Back in my day. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, sounds cool. It, it it looked interesting considering you know I'm a big Shadow great. of the Bosses fan. It it played great, and they've got more than a year of development left to go still. So I'd say they're in a real good fucking shape. Real good shape, Mike. Mm. Like. Like I wanted it now, like that's yeah. how, that's how good a shape there was. And like I said, I only encountered one glitch. Like I was climbing up, and he was shaking me on the neck. You know, you've played Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. And uh, I there's also a bird. There's also a bird Colossus in that. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, three more we don't know about. Mm. Um, well, actually, that's not true. One of them he said was kind of gorilla like. Okay, so like the third Colossus. Sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to avoid that. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. No, like I asked him, I was like, so what do you call them? Like, are they, are they like, are they gods? Are they colossi? Are they Hemus? big things? Yeah. And then and then he's like, you can call them whatever you want. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, okay. But what do you call them? Yeah, what, what is the game? <laughs> what do you refer to them when you talk to the other two guys over there? Yeah. When, when you talk to Mitch and John about the game, what do you call them? Well, he had this really coy answer, and he was like, he was like, he's like, they're gods, but then again, what is a god? You know? And I was like, okay, I see what you're doing. <laughs> he just slapped. He was, he was actually really funny. He was really yeah. nice. Um, but yeah, it's it good. All right, cut the shtick, god damn it. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Um, but yeah, look, I'm looking real forward to that one. It's uh, it's looking real, real fucking good. And and I and I got really excited because I didn't know that it was also Breath of the Wild mini, like with traversal and stuff. I was like, ow, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and it was actually kind of funny because uh, while we were talking, there's this gal, and uh, she was trying to swim into this freezing water. And he's like, he's like, don't, don't, don't go in the freezing water. You'll die. And she's like, why will I die? And I was like, well, because you'll freeze to death. And she's like, I don't see a meter. And he, and he's like, I haven't made the meter yet, but you'll die. <laughs> so just get out of the water. <laughs> was like, I haven't. I don't see a meter because I haven't made it yet. There's only three of us. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically. So it was, it's real good. Um, yeah. And then uh, Jessica played. A uh, real strange game called uh, Church of the Darkness or Church in the Darkness, and I guess it's coming out next month. Okay. And it's a. I talked to the developer for like 
five minutes or something like that. Um, it's coming out to PS4 and PC next month. And it's, um, I've heard about it before. It's like a controversial game. It's basically like uh, Waco the game. Um, oh! Yeah. And it's, um, it's about a cult church in the jungle who you are infiltrating for a variety of the reasons. And I say variety of reasons because it turns out the game's procedural. Oh. And I asked him, so it was like, so, like, what's, what's evil about this cult? And, and it was like, like, what, what's the, what's the bad guy doing or whatever? And he's like, well, that's the thing. I don't know. And I was like, what do you mean? You don't know you made the game. And he's like, well, it's procedural. He's like, so sometimes you'll go in and like, you'll infiltrate and maybe you'll kill some of them and you'll get to the end of the game and you'll find out. Oh yeah, they're an evil evil church and they're like fueling guns or whatever. They're trying to plan a takeover or something. Or other times you'll get to the end and you'll maybe murder a bunch of them and you'll find out you're actually the bad guy. <laughs> and they're actually just going about their business being totally normal and you're oh, the Jesus. asshole. And I was like, "Oh. That was not what I was expecting at all." And he's yeah. like, "I know, right?" Uh-huh. And and I was like, "Okay, so like what's the setup? What's your motivation?" And he's like, "Well, Sometimes you're there infiltrating and gathering data or killing as like an undercover agent. Sometimes you're there because you're just trying to get back your son or daughter or nephew or something who's gotten mixed up into it and you don't really know. And I was like, oh, well, that's kind of interesting. So um, and it's um, it's top down perspective, 3D. uh, And from what I saw. Uh, it seemed kind of like a more elaborate Metal Gear Solid, actually. Okay. And I was like, huh, well, that's kind of interesting. Jessica liked it. She had fun. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't actually play it. I watched her play it. Um, she said uh, there, was, there was voice acting. The voice acting was good, she said. Um, and uh, she actually liked it. And I was like, okay, cool. But yeah, it was a real strange game. <laughs> like, it was just, like, it had, like, all this weird, like, uh, South American, you know, like with the green and the red kind of colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's set in a jungle, and it was just like, I don't know, the tone was kind of weird. And maybe it's just because it's like, well, maybe it's a cult, maybe it's not a cult. Whether <laughs> it is or it isn't, it's up to the game. And it's like, well, that's, I mean, it's interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But it's definitely niche, I guess. Yeah. Because it's like, it's like, it... What's the hook? I don't know. Yeah, right. Okay. All right, buddy. All right. I see what you. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing, and I like you. I like it. What I'm. I like what I see. Yeah, it's interesting. It's That's interesting. cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, Jessica also played another game, uh, which I I also didn't didn't play because it didn't. I'll be honest, it didn't look that interesting to me, but it looked interesting mm-hmm. to her, so it's whatever. Uh, and that's coming out end of September, actually. And its name I can't fucking remember right now, and I feel horrible. Oh no, it's called Aftershock. Uh, it's coming to Switch and PS4 and Xbox One simultaneously, mm. and uh, it's a four v four multiplayer mm. shooter, competitive, objective based. Um, but one side is invisible, and the other side is invincible. <laughs> yeah, you heard what? me. You heard me. Take take a double double take for that for a second. One team of four is invisible, and the other team is invincible. Okay, I yeah. got I, yeah I got that. It just so the invisible team is trying to go around and destroy these like generators or tanks or whatever mm-hmm. that I guess will damage the invincible robots. And when you're damaging the tank, you go uninvisible, so the invisible robots can try and kill you. And there's like a lot of like, it's kind of like attacking versus defending, or yeah. attack attacking versus stealthing to get an objective get, done. Yeah, I get that. Okay, um, it's first person. Um, it's pretty much on all the platforms. It's the end of the month. Um, it'll be twenty bucks. Um. 
which is not bad. Um, but Jessica really liked it. She was like, we're going to get that game. We're going to play it. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> uh-huh. um, You're going to get that game. Yeah. Is what you mean to say? Yeah, something like that. That's that's because, really what that's really what she would say. Yeah. Um, that, that she'll play it, and you'll just be like, "Nah, not my thing." <laughs> just sounds stupid. It sounds stupid. I mean, it looked it looked all right. It had kind of like a cool art style, kind of like a. Uh, kind of like a Team Fortressy two meets sci fi kind of art style. Like Shadow Run. Uh, more stylized than that. Okay. Like more stylized, more stylized and more simpler, I guess is what I would say. Um, but I don't know. She liked it, so I guess we'll see. Um, it's wor- worth a YouTube trailer, Google, I suppose. Um, the other game I played, which of course I was excited to play about because I love the game very dearly, was uh the uh, latest version of Astroneer. I got to talk to the developers there for a minute. Actually, the uh, mm. uh, the art designer for Astroneer was real cool, and um, and um, yeah, they had a really cool booth. Uh, if you're into Astroneer, they had a booth. They they gave out badges that were like part of their Astroneer program. They had these uh, tethers, which are just like the tethers in the games. They had some boxes that were just like the boxes in the game. It was real cool. Mm. Um. And uh, got talked to them about. They're expanding their crafting system from eight to forty-eight items, which is insane. Um, they've got a whole new uh, terrain generation system and new cave systems and stuff like that. Um, it's it's going to be a ton of fun. And I kick I kicked myself in the balls uh, actually just the other day, Mike. You want to know why? Sure. So in that picture that I think I sent you of me standing next to the astroneer bo- booth and I'm mm-hmm. all like so excited, right? Standing behind me is the fucking creator of the game and I didn't recognize him or like, you know, go and like talk to him, which is dumb oh. because he's like six foot and he's a big dude. That's funny. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck me. I had no <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. I-, I was looking at it. I was like, wait a minute. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> it's like one of those things. It's like yeah, it was terrible. It'd be like if you were playing Destiny 2 and Luke Smith is standing right next to you and you don't even go, "Hey buddy, what's up?" Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah like that's the kind of like, "Oh fuck." kind of thing. That yeah, I, I get it. On that one. <laughs> Funny, dude. Terrible, but uh, Ashner uh, available right now on uh, PC and uh, Xbox One, and I did ask about the PS4 version. Um, they said uh, they are still looking into uh making a PS4 version of Ashner. Uh, they said though, um, with their present timeline, um, they're looking at uh getting into version one and officially launching in December on Xbox One and PC, and then they'll see what happens after that, is what they had said. Which is somewhat different than what I said back when their team was like four fucking people, and then they were like, oh yeah, we're totally going to do the PS4 version. So mm-hmm. I would imagine probably financial-wise, because their company's grown to like from like four people to like 50 people or something, um, that they're probably just, you know, financial-wise and just like, let's concentrate on this and then go from there kind of thing. Either way, I do hope it comes to PS4 um, because it'll give all the PS4 owners who can't play it, who want to play it, uh, a chance. Uh, I know my buddy Killbot, real interested in that game, but can't play it. So, there you go. Um, Let's see, what else happened? Uh, I went to PAX with the lady. This, these were all games I played at PAX. Um, first day I was at PAX, I gotta say, I was kind of down the whole day. Like, I didn't sleep well. And um, it seemed like there wasn't, like, PAX wasn't as happening as it usually mm. is, I guess. Um, which is fine. I don't, I don't expect these giant ass conventions to be, you know, on fire every single fucking year. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like some years are going to be better than others, you know? Some are not. Um, I, I saw, I didn't get to play, but I saw a ton of games that are forthcoming. I saw. A shit ton of people play the Division Two. Um, 
people seem to be digging on that. Uh, I saw people playing Destiny. Destiny had a giant booth there. People were buying fucking Galahorns and Aces of Spades replica mm-hmm. toys or guns or whatever, like like fucking candy. Um, yeah. One thing that did seem really strange to me this year at PAX was uh, the merchandise. There seemed to be an overall lack of merchandise this year. Like, there's a lot of stuff to buy, but it mm-hmm. seemed way less than any year before. But what they did have that they didn't have uh, last year was both Xbox and Sony had specialized, um, like, exclusive gear booths or whatever. You know, like jerseys and t-shirts that you could oh okay you could only get there at the convention yeah um like i bought a bunch of exclusive stuff um for myself uh like i bought a a kojima Studios shirt at the sony booth uh jessica bought this this cute god of war shirt that's like got little kind of cartoon art of uh, kratos and atreus and they're sitting in a boat but the boat sprung water and Kratos is looking at At- Atreus like it's his fault, which is mm-hmm. adorable. Um, I got some stuff at the Xbox booth, um, which was kind of cool. And uh, oh yeah, they ha- they obviously had a giant uh, Spider-Man PS4 booth, uh, which was like the majority of Sony's booth for sure. It was huge. They had like a day-night cycle thing. The streets were painted up like they were New York. There was fucking you know, c- coffee lying on newspaper boxes and mm-hmm. stuff from the Daily Bugle. Uh, tons of people playing Spider-Man. Um, which I'll get into because I am playing Spider-Man right now as we speak. Um, let's see, what else did I see? Uh, I saw a bunch of people playing um, some of the new supposedly hot PSVR games that are coming out this fall. Uh, one was called Firewall, which I think Greg Miller of Kind of Funny has described as uh, it's real life Rainbow Six mm-hmm. in, a, in a good way online and stuff. And you do what you would think you would do in a 3D space. Um, I saw some people playing um, what it's called. Hyper Tetris, Tetris Evolution. It's some oh. Tetris game, but it's supposedly like the best Tetris anybody's ever fucking made. And it's in VR. Um, and it's from the guy who did Res and Luminous. Mm-hmm. Um, but I saw people playing that and they had like shit eating grins on their faces. So I guess I'll check that out at some point. Um, let's see. What else did I see? Uh, I don't know. It's so hard and it's been a week. I'm not under the weather because there's like so much stuff everywhere. Yeah. Oh, they had a big booth for Kingdom Hearts 3 which I saw a bunch of people playing, and I was kind of like, hey, it exists. They're yeah. letting people oh, that, play it. Oh, that game's coming they're, out. They're letting people play it. That's cute. <laughs> it did look real good. They were in the Toy Story world, and I was yeah. like, yeah, that looks like Toy Story. That looks exactly I, I, I like lo- Toy Story. I love Kingdom Heart games. Oh, yeah? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah? Have you played uh, all the ludicrous amounts of nope. handheld nope, just ones? Nope, one and two. That are basically required for you to even fucking understand three now. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't. I mean, I can. Be- I understand you it. You better watch a story it's... video. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna watch the opening <laughs> cinematic when it comes out. And besides yeah. that, my, you know, my Jess is gonna play it because she fucking loves it. Yeah. She well, loves all kinds of those games now. She's she's actually starting to become quite the little gamer. Yeah, Breath of the Wild opened the floodgates for her. Uh, uh, well, I mean, she's always been a, a gamer, but it was I know, always but like a, you were saying always a handheld gamer. Oh yeah, well no, she's still it's still only her Switch. Oh, okay. But now she's like, I mean, she's she played uh, like Animal Crossing on her phone and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, now she's she downloaded the Fallout Shelter. Oh, that's real good. Because she's a Fallout fan, and she's like, oh, when Fallout comes out, you know that would be a game I can watch you play. And I'm like, mm, good, because it's gonna happen. Just let you know, it's gonna happen a lot. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, you know, she was like, yeah, I know, you're super excited for it. I'm like, I am. And she's like, just fair warning, if and when a Pokemon on uh, Switch comes out, 
Uh, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I know. I'm never going to see you. And she's like, okay, as long as we're under, we're, you're aware, aware. I'm like, oh, I'm totally aware. And she's like, you're probably okay with it. I'm like, I'm, I'm not okay with it. But, I mean, I understand. I am a gamer as well. So, yeah, that, that made me happy because she's, you know, excited about games coming out now on Switch. And she's, she downloaded, god damn it, um, a weird one, like Last Days of June. Okay. I hear and she was like, supposed to be sad. It's super sad. I was going to say, isn't it about something with like cancer or dying or some shit? Uh, a car accident. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you find out, you know, some things throughout the game. It's really, it's, yeah, it's like, it's like uber sad. And she was like, I don't play games to be sad. I play games to be happy. And I'm like, yeah, well, sometimes you got to be ha- sad to be happy. Mm. Mm. Not wrong. But, yeah. I mean, you know, some of the most, you can play a video game and be like utterly shocked and in 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 tears sometimes. So you know she's, you know she understands now. But yeah, she's excited. You know the the anything on Switch, she's always like, huh? huh? And I'm like, what are you handing me for? She's like, huh? You know, huh? I'm like, you want the game? Tell me, I'll get it for you. I don't care. Yeah. Cause she, you know, I just want to get on Vita Island so I can play remotely. <laughs> That's the only reason I want to get one, and it's they're so hard to find. Yeah, because they don't produce them anymore. Yeah, they don't make them anymore, so you got to find one, you know, pre-owned or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can still. Yeah, I'm sure there's there's got to be a way, right? Yeah, I mean, this is a bummer. I, I'll I'll tell you right now, li- having lived on Vita Island since day one, with my original PS Vita. Yeah, Colin already can't take that away from me. I'm an OG <laughs> fucking PS Vita fucking lover. I have like a hundred games for that fucking thing. Um, the uh, remote play on that mm-hmm. is only as good as your internet, and also only as good as the Vita's Wi-Fi distance, which I'll tell you right now is only a little bit better than the fucking Wii U game pads. Well, here's the thing: I would only play it at home. In okay. my living room, as opposed to being in the all in, in the in the office. Okay. Well, how That's far how ma- far away is your office from your living room? Fifteen feet. Okay, then you're probably. Okay. Where's feet? your router at? In my living room. Okay. Well, then you're fine. Yeah, and I'll be sitting on my couch. It'd be fucking beautiful. Yeah, it'd be fine. But yeah, it's one of those. It's one of, you know, and it's 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 not that I'm gaming that she has a problem with. It would be the I am. In the in the room with the door closed, and she's playing Breath of the Wild. I'm like, well, you'll be playing Breath of the Wild, yeah. And she's like, yeah, but you know, sometimes I want to I want to say something, or I need your help to fit, figure out a puzzle. And I'm like, okay, hey, hun, come out here for a second, and then I go out there. And she was like, you don't have to be a smart ass about it. I'm like, yes, I do. I always do. Yeah. But you know, if I can find a Vita, I'd definitely just be in my living room playing Destiny. That's kind of hard. It's kind of hard playing it on on the Vita, to be honest. Because you only got the two shoulder buttons. Oh um, yeah, there are only two shoulder buttons, huh? Yeah, like you can use the touch screen and the touchpad. So, so yeah, you, you'll be... have to like crab your hand around. I've done it, like, uh, back in D one, on um that one mission on the moon, and the famous uh the loot cave. Oh uh, yeah. I ground like a motherfucker. Um. I mean, the rest of the controls control fine, but, um, yeah, the lack of buttons can be a little challenging. You know, like, I've done it a lot on, like, No Man's Sky, and, like, you click the sticks on that one for a a lot, and you can't click the sticks on the Vita. Mm -hmm. So you're, like, touching the stick plus putting your thumb in, like, the left-hand corner of the screen. It just feels weird. I guess. um, Okay. So I'm just saying, be warned for that. No, no. no. It's doable. Uh, but it's not ideal. It's not fun. Yeah. I mean, I will say, though, uh, it's really great for RPGs, like um, like Final Fantasy XV, where you can, like, mm-hmm. fucking pause the time and, like, do a move and then do a move uh, Fallout style, kind of. Uh, it was fantastic for that. I actually played a bunch of Final Fantasy XV PS Vita remote play tethered to my phone, like, 50 miles away. And it was playable. As long as I could pause and I could let the <laughs> let the image catch up, could buffer yeah. Netflix style. Uh, so yeah, that, 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 those are definitely things. 
Um, so I guess it probably brings us to. Uh, oh, oh, oh! One other thing I wanted to talk about on PAX. Um, and actually, this is this is to the 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 betterment of uh, my relationship with Jessica. Jessica wanted to go to a panel on um, how to improve your relationship if both couples in the relationship are gamers. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I actually didn't want to go, uh, but she convinced me. And um, we went, and it was actually a extremely illuminating, uh, fantastic information um thing mm-hmm. for uh me and me and Jessica because like um I don't know if people can infer or know but like both me and Jessica my Jessica are extremely stubborn and can both get hot headed but we're no. like the same in that area so if we're like oh hey I want to play this and she's like fuck you I want to play this and I'm like no fuck you I want to play this and then it never goes anywhere uh mm-hmm. it's not good right but on things like where we can agree where it's like okay you know like i want to play mass effect 3 and i'm like sweet i'm gonna be over here playing this game you know like it's fine yeah but like we like i want to play like all the co-op games under the sun with her and she wants to play none of the co-op games under the sun with me <laughs> and one of the things that uh well first of all i i didn't want to go because i was like man this is probably gonna be some fucking psychobabble bullshit fucking thing and it really wasn't. It was three couples. One was a couple who had just had uh, a one-year-old baby. There was another couple who didn't have any babies. Um, and then there was another couple who've had four babies and are like 20 years into their marriage. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's all these wonderful questions about like, how do, you, how do you find time to game and stuff like this? And like, what do you do? And, and so some of the su- suggestions that they had that helped me and Jessica were like, uh, you know, she never wants to play co-op games with me, and I've bought, like, a bunch of co-op games in the last two years of our relationship so that we can play them, and we never play them. Or we'll play them for, like, 30 minutes, and then she'll want to go do something else. And I'm like, but the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and so their suggestions were stuff like, you know, you have to compromise a little, you know, like, if... Your uh, your partner wants to play games with with you, you know, and you don't want to um, go with a two rule. Like, say you don't want to, but give him an hour. And then if you still don't like it, give him one more hour. And if it's, like, not your type of game, then cross that game off a list. Mm-hmm. You know? And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. You know? Or, like, one of the things that... Uh, couple who didn't have any kids said was like you want a game with like long-term investment like an mmo or destiny or you know anything you can play for a long amount of time or pathfinder (laughs) yeah well it's funny enough the guy who said that was the guy who worked at paizo um (gasps) yeah by the way met a guy who who worked who worked for uh he's a paizo editor cool uh and he worked for five years um so he's he's done some things <laughs> and the shocking thing about him was like he was uh he was like our age and i was like oh that was not because i guess yeah. maybe when i think of those games i think of like everybody's got a gandalf beard yeah <laughs> sorry say, uh, not sorry you, you probably would have met you you should have been like oh, by the way we i have a game that we play and it's a podcast always be plugging Oh, you know, I thought about it, but, like, we were kind of, like, on the outside of the row to where the mic was. And when they opened up to questions, there was only, like, 10 minutes left to the panel, and there was, like, 50 people. And I was like, yeah, I'm not getting a question in. No. no, It's not happening. You know. (laughs) Like, if I'd been mid-row and able to jump on, like, yeah, I probably could have, but it Mm -hmm. too many people. But I'll tell you the real surprising thing, other than great information and, um, Another thing that was great was, like, make a list of the games. And, like, even if neither of you want to play them, like, why don't you just go down the list and play them anyway? And then you'll know (laughs) whether or not you actually do or not instead of just being Mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't want to play blah. So, like, something that I found out, which I honestly, like, I've known my Jessica for two years. I had no fucking clue. Uh, My Jessica likes fighting games. 
I had no idea. I had no idea. Specifically, huh. she w- is hyped as fuck for Soul Calibur 7, 6, whichever the one that comes out at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, we're getting that game. I was like, you're a Soul Calibur fan? She's like, I fucking love Soul Calibur. And I was like, really? <laughs> How come I'm just hearing about this now? She's like, well, there hasn't been a Soul Calibur for a long time. And I was like, ah, true that. True that. So so now we made a list of, like, we're going to go down the list of, like, different fighting games and stuff. Because she knows that come December, I'm going to be all about that Smash Brothers Ultimate. You know? And she likes that, but she doesn't like that as much as Smash Brothers. And so one of our things was... Um, she's gonna get Smash Brother or the new Soul Calibur. I'll play yeah. it with her. Probably be awful. Just be awful. At it. I like Soul Calibur, but I'm shit at it. Yeah. Um. And uh, I'm gonna and we're gonna start setting aside some time, and she's gonna start playing. I'm basically gonna train her how to be good at Smash Brothers, which is cool. Um. But the real standout of that thing, other than the fact that it helped me and Jessica like a lot, like we were playing games. Like I got her to play Dead by Daylight. Actually. Cool. Like, she's playing it with the group. She loves it. She's in. So yeah. there's one more person to that. And now she's going to give, uh, check it out, she's going to give Paladins a go because she saw me playing it on Switch, and she was like, what's this game? Is it Overwatch? And I was like, no. No, it's not Overwatch. Better than Overwatch. Sorry, Overwatch fans. Not sorry. Um, not sorry at all. <laughs> um, and uh, she's gonna give uh, she's gonna give Paladins a go. She's gonna give Fortnite a go. Um, we already know Destiny's not a go for her because she played ninety percent of the vanilla campaign on D one, and that's fair. You know, she gave that game like fucking thirty hours. That that's fair. If you don't like a game after that long, that's totally fair, right? Sure. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So it's helped our gaming relationship as a couple, like a lot, which is great because it's something that. I kind of unfortunately had to sort of like fight for like, you know, like I'd come home from work and I'd have like an hour and a half before, uh, say a killbot would get on or something like that. And like, you know, I don't want to go play with him, but then I'd only play for like an hour and a half and then I have to get off because then me and Jessica would go do something. You know what I mean? And now it's a little bit better, which I can't say was something I expected to get out of PAX. You know what I mean? Like, you know, just one of those things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but again, the real surprise in that one was some fucking couple, like, dudes just proposed to his, uh, this girlfriend proposed to her now hu- fiance in the middle of this fucking panel. Yeah. Uh, blew my mind. Blew my mind. Because I was like, what the fuck is happening? Is this for real? <laughs> like, and he said yes. And the crowd erupted. And it was just like, what? That's insane. <laughs> we just saw a marriage proposal. Uh, so that was cool. People get engaged at Guardian Con. Oh, yeah, I believe it. I mean, people get in- engaged at conventions and stuff, but it's it's never something I've seen. Yeah. You know? The fact that you've seen it was like, oh, you're like, shit. Yeah, he, the, the, the people were also sitting next to us, so mm-hmm. we were kind of talking to him a bit. And it's like, oh, yeah, we're, we're here for, like, couple advice and that sort of stuff and like the guy was like real quiet and stuff and she was i mean let's be honest she wore the pants in the relationship uh <laughs> and she proposed to him so you know mm. um but it was like i don't know it was still kind of cool and special and magical so all right mike i think it's time and i know you've probably already talked about it a lot and you're playing it right now mm-hmm. i am why don't you tell the good fork fam how Destiny 2 Forsaken is. Uh, it's better than Taken King. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What makes it better than Taken King? I mean, the story's way better. There's way more investment. I mean, the environments, the characters. It's just a far better game entirely. Okay. I mean, it's hard as shit to get exotics now, but eh, whatever. They changed the way that works, so it's all good. Okay. Have you made it to this uh, this Dreaming City thing yet? I'm about to now. Oh, really? Okay, cool. I'm working Dame, on the Because Dame, Dame was telling me about it this morning. Yeah. And he's uh, he's very impressed with the Dreaming City. I mean, the, I mean, the story itself was great. There there were so many, so many things that happened, and you're just like, well, fuck. Well, fuck. 
fuck. You know, you get angry and there's so many like little beats that you're just, you know, tugs on your feels a little bit. You're like, okay, 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 okay. And then there's, I mean, you know, everybody knows what happens. Mm-hmm. But there's there's a scene in the very beginning where, you know, spoiler alert, Kate gets got. Yeah. Uh, your guardian finds him. Let's be honest, it's not a spoiler at this point. <laughs> yeah, well. We've had months. Say, yeah, well, sure. Y- you don't see the ass whooping he gets beforehand. Oh, yeah. I, uh, and I wondered about that. So, so let me ask you this, because I obviously don't have Forsaken, but they showed Cade dying, dying at E3, and then they had kind of Cade's last stand trailer like a couple weeks ago. Sure. Um, is it in the actual game, is it totally different, or is it one of those things, or like what? Um, Kay's last the the Kay's last stand bit is uh, is um him what he's, I mean that is yeah that is his last stand that's him fighting but they do a lot more he does a lot more um uh, he does a lot more killing I guess would be the best way to put it okay uh I mean he he also gets a lot more of an ass whooping. Oh. <sighs> So, so the CGI trailer or whatever isn't really what's in the game. It's similar, but not the same. It, yeah, there's a little different. You know, there's some different beats, okay. but it, is, it's is it's it, basically. Is it a CGI trailer in the game or? Yeah, it's a it's a CGI. It's a okay. it's a cutscene in the game. Okay. So then the the one that they released online is kind of like an abbreviated version then. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, there's only a few things that was missing. Okay, I guess I guess for me the confusion being on the outside is like, Ethy trailer, Alden kills him. Uh, Alden last, kills him. Last stand, uh, dude gets sniped. That was his ghost. Okay. That was how his ghost got uh, gets killed. Okay. And then actually the fun thing about that is you're there when you're you're present when that happens. Oh. Okay. Like the gigantic ass explosion that the you know the light erupting. Hmm. That you feel that in like, as you're playing the game, it happens, and, the, and then you know it's so bad. Your ghost is like, uh, that was Kate's ghost. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, it's really. I mean, there's a couple what the fuck moments. Yeah. By a couple, I mean all of them. I mean, I can tell you what happens if you really want. I I've already read it, so you can go ahead and tell me. Oh yeah, uh, Aldrin is corrupted by the darkness. Mm-hmm. And then he gets, uh, you know, he's he's having visions of his sister, you know, the queen. Mm-hmm. Turns out it's not the queen. It's something called Riven mm-hmm. or, or Riven, mm-hmm. which looks like a gigantic ass beholder. Uh, what's a beholder? It's a D and D thing. Okay. It's like a bunch to... of bunch of tentacles, a big eye, a mouth. It eats him, and then he's you know getting destroyed type of thing, and then. You shoot him. That's that's it. That is it. And then I mean, well, you don't see the shot obviously because it's rated T for teen, mm-hmm. but it, it's implied. You know, it's one of those. He he's sitting there and he's like, you know, what will you do? Da 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 da. And then he mentions, you know, he's like, from where I sit, he's holding the gun. He has the last word. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. You know, that's clever. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's all around. The characters are interesting. The, I mean, there's a shit ton of stuff to do now. Yeah, because that was always one of the things that I kind of wondered about because I've heard various reports from my friends who were playing it on the Tangled Shore. Some people are like, it's like the size of the, the Warbind patrol zone. Other people say it's the size of the Dreadnought. So I'm kind of like, maybe it's sort of subjective because it's kind of hard to tell mm-hmm. like its size or something like that. So, um, I mean, it's 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 a large area. Okay. I mean, there's four. Hold on, I'm looking. I'll look at the map right now. I think there's four areas, and they're multi-leveled. Well, that's good. Uh, one, two, three, four, plus the Dreaming City. So, I mean, you got to think if you include the Dreaming City because it is a patrollable zone. Uh, yeah, you, but it's, it's not it's the same than... like destination. No. I don't know. You, I, I you guess, might have to go. I, I guess through. what I'm getting at is compared to the other patrol zones in D2, what what's it comparable to size wise? You think? Uh, it's I think it's the biggest, honestly. Really? It's, it's yeah, it's fucking 
I mean, it's multi-tiered. You can fall down. If you can be jumping around the, the the tethers, and next thing you know, you fall, and then you land on a rock, and you're like, "I'm alive! I'm alive!" Uh, you know, there's verticality so now. It's got great verticality, kind of like Nessus, maybe. Nessus had some great verticality to it at points. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to think, was there anything in D1 that had a lot of verticality? I don't. I don't think so. No, not really. I mean, I'm I'm in an area now that has a gigantic ass pipeline over top of it that you could literally run the entire length of the area if you wanted to. Yeah. Okay. Can yeah. you use your sparrow? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Because that was not always, like it's not always... like Mercury. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's exactly what I was about to say. I was like, because that's what I really hated was like, uh, with the exception of uh, Nessus and Earth. Uh, the D two patrol zones really kind of killed the well, killed the sparrow can, style. I know you can do it. Okay, you can do it on you can you can use your sparrow on Io. Just, yeah, it's just but Io is kind of small. I mean, sure. I mean, yeah. Um, sweet. So how are the how are the weapons? Like, do they feel unique? I mean, it random rolls are back. I haven't gotten an exotic yet, so I, I don't know how the exotics play. Bows are fucking fantastic. Yeah, I've heard bows are good. Bows are fucking great. Like I'm I actually have a bow in my inventory right now, which oh, is really that's funny. Because <laughs> didn't didn't you say you hated bows? Yeah. And I don't like it. Yeah, as long as I mean the way it didn't work. <laughs> but yeah, it works it works it works well now. Oh, okay. Ruby. Yeah. Um let's see what other questions do I have? Uh have you played uh Gambit since the little preview we played? Uh no. Okay. Um, I wanna I wanna get, you know, some gear up and stuff. There are new maps though. Yeah, you're saying it what was it four or five? Four or five. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I think they I think they just showed you the the Earth map is what it was during that little re the little preview. Yeah, I mean but we I, we thought that last week too. So yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, but it's confirmed now, so okay, that's good. Um, is it really weird not having Nathan Fillion as Cade? No. Okay, so Nolan North did a good job. Yeah, yeah. The only time you could ever tell it wasn't it wasn't uh it, it, that it wasn't the Nathan Fillion was when. I mean, it does have the XO over top of it, so it's easier to kind of hide. That's not Nathan Fillion. That's you know, yeah, that's no one the, uh, um, like when the voice it, filter thing. The, the modulation, yeah, yeah. When when he gets loud, mm -hmm. in one of the in one of the uh, the missions, he like says he's like you know, he says, "Look out below, or I got you," or something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. And you you're like, that's that's the only time it really cracked. But that's just because the the difference in timbre, right. Yeah. So I watched a uh, I watched a video before Forsaken was out on the IGN of the first fifteen minutes, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Yeah, he's doing a good impersonation of Nathan Fillion, but just because Nolan North is a little higher, uh, pitched, I think. Yeah. And Nathan's a little deeper. And I think Nathan, even though he's Canadian, he kind of has a little bit of that like southernness to his voice. You know what I mean? Yeah. The the warmth. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. So, okay. Is there yeah. is there a lot of like is Cade throughout and then he dies at the end or like what's the deal? No, it's, he dies right in the very beginning. Oh, okay. So, like balls, yeah, balls in the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Well, alrighty then. Okay, so let me ask you this because this is something that we were talking about way back at E three, and they're like, oh man, they're killing Cade. Um. By the end of the campaign story, did you feel like Cade was a proper motivator for the story? And did you feel like you got your revenge or whatever? Yeah. 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 You felt yeah, killing, fulfilled on that front. Kill, killing every one of the barons, they kind of like, they talk to you throughout the mission. Like oh, yeah. the baron. The like, baron like, talks to you. Like taunting? Uh, like, oh, you're the minion of Cade Six. Your master screamed when we were when we were killing him, and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, that's taunting. Buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I egg it on. It's whatever. 
Oh, hold on. That's a beautiful ass fucking. Okay. What? Uh, cutscene for the for the Dreaming City. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, Dan was saying it was fucking beautiful. And it it is actually wow. Okay. All right, that's cool. I'll, live reaction. I'll take it. You know how I love my reactions. Oh, fuck. Fuck me. What? I went to see my queen again. No, she gone. She gone. She gone. She did. She did. Hmm. Yeah, it's the Dreaming City. It's, you know, it's more as uh, Petra Venge talking about the Dreaming City and how she hit it and all that. That was actually quite beautiful. Groovy. It has, it has a very elven shape to it that's so funny. like if dame literally said and he was like think uh the elven city in uh lord of the rings yeah okay that's cool i mean awoken are kind of elfish in a way anyway sure so that's groovy okay yeah. wow all right okay i'm just in a hmm. cool i'm just in a area Oh fuck me, dude! I'm just gonna send you a. I'm. I'm. I'm yeah, do from it. where do I'm it. standing, I'm, I'm gonna send you a picture. Do it. This is the first thing I when I turned around after landing. This is what I saw. What's it coming through? Oh, uh, your front uh, text. Okay. But yeah, dude, it's. I mean, it's it's super fun. I'm I'm I'm. I mean, I've always had fun playing Destiny, so it's not like a that big of a surprise. But and the Dreaming City has. That's cool. Is that a background thing, or is that something you can go to? I believe that's where I can go. Okay. And the blind well is where I need to go. Okay, so the the blind well is a public event, so it's sort of like the. Uh, Okay, okay, okay. I guess that's like the Court of Orcs. Groovy. The Blind Well. It might be like Love the Court Love me some court. Yeah, it looks really cool. Wow, dude. Misty air, misty, all mist ground. I'm pretty sure if I fall, I die. Right on. A, sh a, queen, a queen ship just flew by my head. Yeah, this is dope as shit, man. Right on. There's Ahamkara, spine, Ahamkara skulls on the ground. Right on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with this. Well, well, the big game that I've been playing this week is, of yeah. course, uh, Spider-Man PS4. Playing it right now. Um, and speaking of pretty, uh, this is the best-looking video game I have ever played in my life. Hands down. Hands down mike mm -hmm. like uh it's got a photo mode you know you can like pause it and stuff like oh yeah in. peter parker is a is a photo is a uh, newspaper photographer so that makes sense uh, not in this one uh he like the amount of attention to detail in this game um like it blows my mind mm -hmm. like uh you can like zoom in and you can see individual like stitches on the costume and like like realistic stitches not like oh it's a video game and we're just gonna kind of cover this up like some bitch modeled real stitching mm -hmm. you know what i mean and like uh like I'm, I'm actually wandering around a park right now like i'm on the ground and it's like and that's the other thing it's like they didn't have to do any of this stuff they did not have to make this game look this good. Like, because you're swinging, you're usually up high, you know, swinging yeah. around Spider-Man. But, like, down here, there's fucking birds flying everywhere. There's people playing chess. Foliage moves. Um, I'm looking out onto the water across, uh, I don't know, I've never been to New York. I assume that's the Brooklyn Bridge. Ferries are going by. The water looks... I'll tell you this right now. The water looks as good as Sea of Thieves, buddy. Like, there's, there's, there's like that's the, that's the thing. Like, there's no reason 
other than because we can. Yeah. Uh, it looks as good as this. And then the other thing is like you're walking like like I'm like I'm swinging right now, and it's like sunset. Um, it has like the best reflections, the best lighting I've ever seen. Like it looks like a fucking sunset. It's like cascading across. There's like a that little bit of haze. Uh, I just flipped up into the sky and some pigeons. Like I I, I flew through like a little squalor of of pigeons and they like fluttered away and shit Mm -hmm. and like there's like rain reflections like the the texture work on this game is the best i've ever seen like i thought i thought god of war looked really good this year uh and uh detroit become human looked fantastic and uh you know everybody knows you know last of us and uncharted series is top notch um this is this is like that on steroids, man. Like, I like it's really hard for me. Like, so here's here's how bad it was. So, out of my own curiosity, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna find my Spider-Man Two video game on the original Xbox, and I'm gonna pop it into my 360, and I'm gonna see how big of a leap we're having here. Like, <laughs> I, I played I played Spider-Man Two last night for a little bit. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's like it's like Grand Theft Auto Three level graphics you know real blocky some some fancy textures here and there but uh real shit shit graphics really Mm -hmm. if i'm being totally honest um and then you go to this and it's like you're playing all of the cgi parts in any of the movies like it it looks better it looks better i'll be on it looks better um than some of the cgi parts like it's so realistic looking um and even though i've not been to new york um i've told in the articles that i've read said that they uh they nailed like nobody else has put this much attention to detail in new york since the division which is which is actually famous for how detailed they are but like i can like drop down to street level right now and there's like cars, there's people getting mugged. You can look into the shop, like you can look into all the windows, which is something I've never seen before in a big open world like this. Like, I mean, you can look into like some windows in the division, but I mean, like, like, I mean, I can be like street level, like I'm looking right now, like what's going on in this, this store? The store looks like they're selling furniture, I guess. And let's see, I swing up here and I go up high. And you can like look into the windows as you're like going up. Like there's like fucking shit inside the windows and stuff, which is like, you know, it's like it could have just been a texture, you know? And it's like, I don't even understand how. They just added it because they wanted to. Yeah. I I mean, I know they've spent five years on this game, you know? And Insomniac is, you know, a world famous studio. But it's like, I don't even understand how anybody had the time to do any of this stuff. You know, five years is a long time, Tim. I mean, it's true. It's it's definitely really true. But at the same time, like, like there was a, uh, I won't, I won't, I won't spoil the story for Spider Man because one of the one of the great things about this game is the story is on fucking point. Like, and I'd heard that in the reviews earlier this week, but uh, the story is really something incredibly special. Um. Uh, it's it's well written, it's well acted, it's well directed, and then the other thing for longtime Spider-Man people is it's is it's different, you know. Like <sighs> trying to like so it's 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 its own universe. It's not based on any pre-established comic book or movie or anything like that. But um, the way I would compare it, I was telling Dame this morning. Um, I would compare it as it's the Spider-Man you know and love, but there are some fundamental differences that kind of change the whole universe. Um, I would compare it to Telltale's Batman series, where, like, in that one, um, uh, slight spoiler alert, you know, like, Bruce Wayne grows up with the Penguin as a friend, Mm -hmm. and, like, Alfred is kind of a dick and up to no good. It's kind of that kind of differences where it turns some things on its head. Oh, okay. You know, like Peter doesn't work at the Daily Bugle. Um, I, I, I literally won't say where he works because it is a 
what the fuck kind of spoiler. Like, it was mm. an hour in, and I was like, are you fucking shitting me? You know? Like, it, I have, it, it blew my I, mind. I have, gu- I have guesses now. Oh, yeah? Well, they'd be wrong. I'll tell you that right now, because I know the Spider-Man universe inside and out. All the comics, all the things. And I would have never guessed in a million years where he works. And more importantly, who he works for. Um, but yeah, you're welcome to guess. Uh, something that's been shown in the trailers is uh, Mary Jane is actually a reporter that works at the Daily Bugle um, in this version. And interestingly enough, you get to play as her. Really? And her game segments don't suck either. They're like, uh, they're really Uncharted-y. Uncharted? Uncharted-y? Uncharted-y? They're very Uncharted-like. Um, you're like talking to people, you're solving puzzles and stuff, and you're like taking pictures to like get the scoop, and there's some light stealth elements to it. Mm. And even more impressive, the stealth elements don't suck, <laughs> which is which is the other big thing. Um... And then uh, in terms of gameplay, um, I would say the majority of the game plays like its own unique hybrid of uh, there's there's no way and you can't talk about the combat without comparing it to the Batman Arkham games Um, because the hand to hand combat is extremely similar to the way that that gameplay loop is set up. Um, you know, you have a dedicated dodge button, you have an attack button, um, you have like a jump or get the fuck out of the way button, and then you have a, uh, uh, like a long range button. Um, and it's, it's incredibly similar to Arkham, but I mean that in a good way because the Arkham games are some of the best superhero games ever made. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to fault them for like, you know, them putting their own spin on a system that people already know works for superhero games. Um, The thing that I will applaud them for is even though it's very Arkham-like in its uh, ground-to-ground combat, um, it does have that Insomniac flair. Uh, Insomniac's really known for really unique and diverse weapons in their Ratchet & Clank games and Resistance and stuff like that. Like They're known for doing gadgets and you do have a gadget wheel in this game i've only got a couple of them right now you've got some basic webs but you've got some other stuff which i didn't expect in a spider-man game like you've got this little spider drone that like pops out of your back kind of like uh that drone in spider-man homecoming except it shoots Mm -hmm. tasers at enemies which is kind of rad so you can be like if like if you're overwhelmed by enemies like you can just be like pop out some tape it's like spectacular spider-man or the like Something like along that lines, like gadgets wise, or the, the Spider Man Unlimited, not not unlimited, the one the one in the future. Mm, oh, twenty forty nine. Twenty forty nine. That's right. The number. I didn't yeah. want to say the wrong number. I I would compare it like if if you know Spider Man lore stuff, uh, you have some gadgets more akin to twenty forty nine, or uh, the MCU Spider Man, like the Stark suit with all of its gadgets and shit. You know, you're able to uh, you like can like click the right stick, and you can kind of send out a pulse with your spider sense, and you can kind of vaguely see uh, like an outline of where an enemy is uh, when you're fighting close quarters, like if you're uh, like indoors or whatever. Yeah. Um. So you can kind of get a get a sense. You can play um. You can play missions totally stealthily, um, which is also kind of like Arkham. And they definitely take some cues there, but it's a little bit cooler because, like, and t- did you ever play any of the Batman Arkham games? Nope. Okay. Uh, you're playing any sort of stealth game of any kind? I mean, Tenchu Stealth Assassin back in the day. Okay. I, I or, or played Thief. that. I know of I that. Thief. I played a little bit of Thief. Okay. So, yeah. you know how, like, in those games, you can, like, be real quiet. And, yeah. like, take out fucking everybody, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, also, I mean, you can also do that in the Batman Arkham games. But in Spider-Man, it's a little bit better because of the traversal system, which definitely is the best I've ever seen. Um, so, basically, like, you have, like, say, for example, uh, an early mission in the game, which is an early spoiler, 
uh, you're like in a jewelry store and you're indoors. So you're not like out flicking around the whole city mm-hmm. and uh, you're trying to be stealthy about it because you don't want them to like shoot the hostages. Right. Because you're the fucking hero. And so you have like a couple options. You can just fucking shoot your web up on the st- ceiling and like crawl on the ceiling and then like kind of pick off the guys. You can go through air vents and like uh, kind of lay traps for them, little, little spider spider gadget traps. Mm-hmm. Or you can, um, how do I put this? Like, there's some like scaffolding that's above that's very video gamey, and you can like perch on them and kind of see below you. And then, like, when the moment's right, you can get the drop on them. So you can do stuff like that, or you can just go balls to the wall and, uh, you know, beat the shit out of them, Spider-Man style. Um, when incoming attacks come in, you'll get, like, a little spider sense prompt, and then you can dodge out of the way with circle. Um, but the thing, like, so uh, let me put it this way. So when I first started playing it, um, I played for two hours Thursday night. I had to go to sleep. And uh, I thought the game was fucking unimaginably beautiful and uh, that the web sling was real good. But I'll mm-hmm. tell you what, on the tutorial mission, which isn't much of a spoiler, you fight uh, Wilson Fisk um, because it's in trailers and whatnot. Um, the regular goons and Wilson Fisk handed me my fucking ass. Like I saw the game over screen like 10 times before I finished the tutorial. And so on the one hand, I have to kind of give it a knock for like, whoa, that's a uh, that is a steep ass learning curve there game that I just started playing and it's handing me my ass on the regular difficulty setting. Mm -hmm. Um, But on the other hand, I didn't feel like it was like. Unfair, I guess. Like, like I knew like, oh, yeah, that guard punched Spider-Man in the face and I just lost to a non superpowered goon. I feel like such a tool or like when Wilson Fisk beat the shit out of me, I was like, okay, I didn't, I didn't heal myself. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pay attention to my button prompts. I didn't get the fuck out of the way. You know, like I felt like it was my fault, even though it was a little punishing. Um, five hours later. Um, I, and, and I say five hours because it kind of took me a while to get a hold of the controls because like on the one hand, like right now, like I can just hold down R2 and I'll just like swing through the city mm-hmm. uh, automatically. Um, but if I want, there's like a thousand different options for movement. I can click the left stick to dive to gain more speed. I can uh, release R2 at the right part of the spring to get, or right part of the swing to get like more swing momentum. I can press X to let go and do a flip. I can then do uh, tricks in the air to both maneuver through buildings and also gain a couple points of XP and also look fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I can hold uh, L2, which goes into uh, like a full third person with a reticule, and then I can hit R2 and I can web zip to whatever the fuck I feel like as long as I'm in range. I can hit uh, L1 and R2 simultaneously on... Um, there's sort of like, like as you're swinging, you'll see like a little circle kind of appear at certain places on uh, buildings and you can just instantly zip to those and you can either perch there and survey or from that moment, if you hit X at the right moment, you can like fling off of it to use it as like a momentum boost. And so there's all these options while you're swinging. And, and, and I also forgot about like, um, one of the things and the problems in the other Spider-Man games is like you're swinging and you hit like a fucking brick wall. And you hit a brick wall. You don't go mm-hmm. anywhere. You don't do anything. You bounce off of it like a fucking retard. Well, in this, if you're holding uh, R2, and depending on which way you're you're moving your, your stick, you'll run along the side of the wall. You'll bounce off of it. You'll, you'll do whatever. And, like, if you're holding kind of like maybe like an Assassin's Creed game or something like that where there's, like, a big parkour mechanic, yeah. Um, as long as you're holding R2 and like moving forward, like Spider Man will like auto jump over fucking cars and like swing over this or that. But the the beautiful thing about that part, like I was saying, is like it doesn't have to be that way. You can be a little more riskier and like you can like swan dive through fucking the fire escapes if you want to. Um, or you can auto 
get through it. Like it's kind mm-hmm. of dealer's choice, which I think for a brand new game and there hasn't been a Spider-Man game in a long time and for people who suck at video games, like you can get by. But for people like me who are now uh I feel really comfortable with the swinging right now. Um like you can go through like you would expect but the the thing about it compared to the other games is you have you have the control like there's never a point where it feels like oh i'm swinging and the physics have fucked me and i'm bouncing off this wall and it feels janky as shit like i feel in control of the swings the directions where my web is going mm-hmm. like at all times which is probably even the game's beautiful and it's really good and it feels like it's firing on all cylinders is its greatest achievement and i know from dev diaries it was one of the hardest things to do because um one of the things in all the other spider-man games with the exception of spider-man 2 is like where where your web connects like they're used to just shoot up into the sky and he's kind of swing flying as it were and you're just sort of driving him yeah um but in one game, the game that I was talking about, the old Xbox Spider-Man 2 game based on the movie, uh, they actually like attached the webbing and it had realistic physics. But they never did that again in another video game. I don't know why. Maybe they were lazy. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But in this, they have realistic physics, but you have more control over them than any before, than any time before. Um, and uh, it's just, you know, coupled with how good it looks and how well it runs um like it's it is something else man like it like i'm just swinging right now just kind of casually and talking to you and i feel like it feels almost kind of zen once you get into it like really like it feels like like you know how like when um like you're talking to your buddies and, and i guess maybe you probably feel this better than i do because as you know, I'm not good at playing video games and talking at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of reminds me of like when you're like in the zone in a raid in Destiny and you're just sure. killing it. You know, you're doing all of your parts and you're just chilling with your buddies and you're just like you're not even really talking about the raid. You know, you're just in the mm-hmm. zone. That's what web slinging feels like. Like once you get a hold, hold of the controls, like uh, it feels glorious and freeing and as radical as it should be um and that's really good cool, man. yeah so uh i think one of the things uh coming back to a question you asked me last week was like man i hope you're not over overhyped um i would say so far i mean obviously i don't know how the rest of the game plays out i've heard that the middle section of the game uh is kind of a dud like it's it's back and front loaded, like all of its mm-hmm. good stuff is what I've heard in the reviews. Um, but so far, um, I am I'm loving every bit of it, and part of it too. And I even said this last week. Part of it might also be because I am, like I'm wearing a Spider-Man shirt right now. Spider-Man's my favorite superhero. Yeah. I've read all the comics. Uh, as a comic fan, and as a lover of Spider-Man, like it's hitting. It's hitting all of the cylinders. Oh, and then the other thing, like, and this was something I was real worried about. I was real worried that the jokes were going to suck. Mm-hmm. You know, like the jokes that Spider-Man says are just going to be like, oh, okay, well, that's, I've heard better. Um, so far, they've been, they've been real good. And uh, one of the things that I had seen, um, there's, there's a thing um, in the game where you're just like running around the city collecting old backpacks that Peter's left behind from various battles. Because part of this game is uh, Spider-Man has, like, he's an older Spider-Man. He's in, like, his late late 30s, 40s. He's been Spider-Man for, like, 10 years. Oh, okay. Which is kind of cool. So it's, like, you're playing Spider-Man who knows how to be Spider-Man. And so you're, like, going around, and one of the things you can find is uh, these backpacks that are, like, webbed up. And they'll be on a building. And you got to kind of search the building, which is kind of fun. And I expected not to like that. And I actually really do. And, um one of the things that the reviews got after was like, oh, it's kind of shitty. And I was like, actually, it's, it's kind of fun. And then for me, because I'm a Spider-Man fan, like, like what you get in them is uh, you get, uh, you have this collectibles tab. And um, inside the, 
inside the backpacks are all these little little items. And then uh, Peter will be like, oh, yeah, I remember this item. And he'll give you like a little bit of a of a story about a thing or he'll be like, oh, yeah, here's my old web shooter from the thing. Or like, here's a vial of sand that I took from Sandman or like uh, my favorite one bit of a spoiler is he got a uh, a business card from Nelson and Murdoch, who's of course Daredevil. And he was like, oh yeah, there's that really nice lawyer guy who 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 told me that he can count on me or I can count on him for any sort of lawyer advice because I'm Spider-Man. That was real good. Wait a minute. How did he know I was Spider-Man if he was blind? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, little things like that that are just like, uh, that are just awesome. And then like uh, other tweaks to the formula, like um, kind of taking a little bit of a page out of uh, Grand Theft Auto, or uh, other open world games where there's like a radio station. So like as you're swinging, um, uh, Peter's phone will like go off and you'll hear um, part of J. Jonah Jameson's podcast, actually. And in this version, he's like this crazy, uh, like extreme, like uh, right. Alex Jones. Yeah, he's basically Alex Jones. <laughs> like like he's he's literally Alex Jones. J- James Jones Jameson, which is kind of funny, um, and uh, those are those are pretty great. Like there was one he was talking like, um, like do you you know the the story about J. Jonah Jameson and the 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 villain the Scorpion, mm-hmm. and how J. J. Uh, created him or whatever. Like in the in the game, he's like talking about this. You know, and he's like, you know, I didn't know he was crazy. Like, I was just trying to create an anti-Spider-Man, and everybody's getting up and like getting all like huffy and stuff. Uh, it's it's pretty fantastic. That's that's awesome. Um, and then the other thing that I didn't talk about to kind of wrap up the Spider-Man thing, because I could talk forever about the Spider-Man, um, is um, there's a shit ton of like, uh, there's actually a lot of RPG stuff to it. Like, you have a level system, you have XP. Um, you have gadgets, and they have their own uh, equipment and ranks and upgrades, and there's about six different types of resources to get so that you can, like, craft them and, like, level them up and stuff. Um, a thing that I love that's really smart is so there's a bunch of different suits. There's 28 suits. I've got maybe about half of them right now, mm-hmm. um, like different Spider-Man suits from the comics and whatnot. And each suit comes with a... Uh, like a special ability um for example like the basic suit is sort of like a battle focus which lets you uh regenerate your special meter quickly or uh like one that's shown in the trailers is uh, the spider punk outfit and you can like rock out and blast enemies with waves of sound Mm -hmm. with your guitar (laughs) yeah um but the smart thing that they did was uh even though each suit has a special ability uh, the once you've unlocked that suit, that special ability is no longer tied to that suit. So unlocking suits both serves as, oh, cool, like, I've got the Scarlet Spider suit, and it looks rad, but the, spi- the Scarlet Spider suit gives me a hollow decoy special ability, so I can send out, like, hilariously, a clone of myself <laughs> mm. um, and, like, trick the bad guys. But I don't have to have it on that suit. So unlocking the suit gives you the suit, but it also gives you the ability of that suit. So you can take that power and put it on, say, the classic Spider-Man suit from the comics, or uh, the um, or like the Spider Punk suit. So you can put that special power in any of the costumes. And then on top of that, uh, your suit has three mod slots, and then they do. Um, they do shit like, um, you know, uh, increasing melee damage or reduces bullet fire. You know, mods. Yeah. Um. So yeah. And there's a bunch of gadgets I don't have yet, but I can see them in the thing. Like, so you've got you've got web shooters, you've got impact webs, which are impact webs are are one of my favorites so far. It shoots like this ball. And if a dude is close enough to a wall, it instantly, like, captures him permanently against the wall. So if you're in a bunch of bad guys and you shoot that and you get him, like, right next to a wall, like, you know, he's he's out. He's KO'd. Um, you've got the aforementioned little spider drones that shoot tasers. Um, it's got 
uh, electric webs, which I haven't unlocked yet. Um, it's got a web bomb, which I'm just looking at in the menu here. I guess it, I mean, I guess it's a web bomb. It blows up with webs. There's a trip mine, which is something that's shown in the trailer where if you walk or an enemy walks by it, it webs them out and webs them to the wall. I'm probably going to like those when I unlock it. Um, got a concussive blast. It's a, like a little sonic pulse thing. Um, and then uh, there's like a anti-gravity suspension matrix thing, which I guess unlocks at level 25. Um, basically, like it throws people up at anti-grav and then I can like web them from there. Um, and then on top of that, there's uh, a three-tiered skill tree, complete RPG style. Uh, they're divided up into web slinger, uh, defender, and then innovator. Innovator tree has stuff uh, that relates to you being able to do more things in the interactive environment. Like when you start the game, you know, you can like web up people and like punch people and stuff. Uh, but as you unlock perks in the innovator tree, you can do things like, oh, I can grab manhole covers or anything that's in my environment and whip it towards me and then hurl it at a bad guy. Or, you know, if a, if a dude's webbed up, I can grab him now and I can use him and throw him against bad guys as I'm fighting. Mm. Or then Defender is, is, is things like um, increasing your dodge window and uh, being able to pick up and throw enemies. And then Web Slinger gives you more... Uh, web slinging abilities and stuff um you know like uh, additional air air attack powers and um being able to just move faster and stuff like that um yeah that sounds really yeah i mean i'm glad it, it kept your expectations yeah so far i mean i i don't feel like i've been let down i'd say the only things that have been like mm, i don't like that was uh i mean the initial difficulty caught me off guard because it was like you know it's a spider-man game i i wasn't i'm i did not go into it expecting um it to like treat me like a gamer i guess yeah, yeah. like i went into it expecting like i'm probably gonna have to bump this up to the hard difficulty like five minutes in and five minutes in spider-man's dead and jessica's laughing at me and i'm just like i'm sorry you kicked my ass what do you want me to do <laughs> you know um, so I'd say the medium challenge, the, the base difficulty is very strong. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's very gamery. So like if you're into games and stuff, like it, it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel overpowered maybe in the beginning cause I didn't understand the controls, but like right now I feel like, oh yeah, if I don't play well, I'll get my shit kicked in, which is how it should feel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's, that's what I want. Like, I don't want to be treated like a baby. Like, I don't want to be treated like, oh, you lost this fight. Do you want us to enable the baby mode? It's like, you, fuck you. <laughs> do you want a binky? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I hate that in games when they tell when they ask me that. Have you ever played games and they've oh, asked yeah. you that? Oh, it's yeah. the worst. You got, you, you got stumped. Do you want to go down to difficulty? Like, no, motherfucker, I do not. Yeah, like, how much of an insult is that? It's so bad. Um. So, yeah, I'd say the only things that have that have really rubbed me the wrong way so far are... That initial first hour or so was quite a jump because they they just launch you right into it. Like the opening of the game is like uh, Peter, he like wakes up, he's late for work, and then his police scanner goes off and is like, hey, uh, Kingpin's finally been busted. We need all units here. And he's like, oh, snap. And he like jumps out the window and then you're web slinging. It's like 30 seconds and then you're playing the game. I was like, okay, well, we're in it now. And then you're swinging and then five minutes after that you're fighting kingpin you know and it's like oh snap i've i've done a lot of stuff in a short amount of time here which i guess in some respects is probably kind of good like they went on a short ass tutorial rather than like well now we're going to teach you how to web swing and we're going to pause the screen this is like eh you'll figure it out <laughs> so it's it's a good thing and it's a bad thing i guess is what i'd say um, all right tim so Yes. Just, just to because now I'm in the Dreaming City. I've been through. Uh, you speak to Toland. Okay. Uh, Let's go. He mentions. He mentions. Why are you in the Ascendant Realm? This is where she rules. She'll mm -hmm. make deals and promises and not keep them. Yeah. And then you get dropped into Dreaming City, and it's goddamn beautiful. And then you go speak to Petra Venge, and they added obviously pursuits and and whatnot. 
What's, um, a, what's a pursuit, buddy? Is uh, that like a bounty? Like a, ba- a bounty. A bounty. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they brought the uh, old bounty system back. Yeah, they brought. A, well, no, hold on. A pursuit is something that gives you powerful gear. Bounties are, are, you know, they give you uh, the 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 planetary material and then something special. But okay. Petra Venge is selling charges of light to activate the blind well, which is probably the it's like the court of Oryx. Yeah, it's like the runes. Yeah, it was runes, and, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was runes. Yeah, and she's selling things called raid ban- banners. That's cool. Uh, can be used before any raid encounter to allow your team members to gain super energy and heavy ammo. So basically, heavy cool. since are back. Groovy, groovy. Yeah, yeah, I'm liking it. Okay, 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 okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I'm, 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 I'm digging what I'm seeing thus far. Sweet. So yeah, man, I'm, uh, I'm digging it. Yeah, I'm. You know, despite what other people might, might say about me um i am happy that people are digging uh forsaken and it seems like a really good uh expansion you know uh you're saying that dame saying that kono saying that buzz is saying that um i think for me um the you know other than that uh glowing praise for it what i'm personally waiting for is to see how you guys feel um you know 100 hours or 30 days later about it all because if there's either still stuff to do or the stuff to do is like really good Mm -hmm. um i think i'll definitely consider uh jumping back onto the bandwagon as it were well well three years is also uh a little probably destiny three I know, you know, bungee stuff. Like bungee works. Wait, I'm confused. What what about three years? You said like three you said like three years. A hundred hours or three years. I'm like, that's a did large Did I say three years? Yeah, I'm like, that's a oh, large I, gap there, buddy. I did not mean to say three years. I meant to say thirty days. Oh, yeah. In my head, I thought thirty days. So if that's not what was said, I'm no, sorry. I think you said three years, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah I that's mean not, no, that's not what I was saying. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think I mean, obviously, the the people who get paid to play twelve hours a day, you know, the Twitch streamers, those yeah. guys, the, con- the the content creators will be, you know, I'm bored. I want something new. But I mean, yeah. they can suck a dick. Let's just be honest. They get paid to play the game. You know, yeah. You get paid to run. That's fine. Uh, but some of us enjoy. You know, you, you're you have to take your time. You gotta you gotta make love to it. <laughs> I mean that's that's fine. I mean the the best thing that I've heard is that they out taking king to their taking king. Yeah. And I think I, that is that's I a think great I, statement. I think I've actually said those exact words. Yeah. So you know, they they made taking king they were like, "Oh yeah, y'all remember taking king?" Yeah, that ain't got shit. Let's just be honest. Yeah. So. Oh, the other thing I forgot to ask and I asked I asked this at Kono and Buzz. Um how do the um, how's the ratio of brand new enemies to reskinned enemies feel? Well, the scorn feel totally different. Okay, that's what you mean. I mean they don't fight I, I, like Colin. Here, here, here's what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of like when we first saw the trailer for Taken King, we were like, oh, okay, they're glowy, but they're the same character models. They're fucking reskinned. But when you fought them, it was a totally different experience and a cool experience, in my opinion, mm-hmm. versus when uh, you fought the Siva uh, infected creatures. I didn't feel that they were that fucking different than no, the regular. Scorn feels totally different. Okay, they do. Yeah. Okay. They have shield. They have they have guys that come at you with fucking flaming sensors and whack you with fire. They set you on fire. They have. Uh, their own exploders now. Okay. They got guys with shields. Okay. You know, they, yeah, it's it. They, they feel really different. I mean, the barons themselves feel like each one of them feels like a boss fight. You know. Okay. So yeah, I mean, it's 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 a fun little add-on. Well, uh, I'm, I, I'm I liking guess, it. Uh, well, that's another question then. So the barons, do they feel? 
how how are they handled? Do you just like go there and you fight them, or are they handled like strike bosses, or they're 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 adventures, they're heroic adventures, basically. Uh, they're like strike, okay. they're like strike okay. bosses. Okay, okay. And they have multiple steps. Yeah, like it's not just boss. stand there and melt them. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I mean, that's what I figured from the trailer, but I might as well ask. Mm-hmm. No, it's, yeah. Yeah. Why not ask? Right. You know. But yeah, I'm having it's it's super fun. And it's 6v6 now in PvP, apparently. I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that either. I was That's trying to get my... Shouldn't you know that? To... Like, don't you guys go through the twa and all that sort of shit? I mean, I, I, we had, we didn't talk about today. We just talked about Forsaken. <laughs> like, yeah. we, the, the twa was like, oh, yeah, we're not really going to talk about the twa, are we? Nah, we're not talking about Forsaken. Fuck it. So that's what we did. I mean, and Forsaken is is pretty fantastic. as at, Right now, I mean, I'm having... A blast. Which is what you want to do. You want to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, I think we're out. I think that's it, right? Yeah, that is it. Um, well, alrighty, folks. Um, thanks for joining us for another episode of the Forking Your Ear podcast. As always, you can tweet at us at GetForkPod, email at us, uh, the Forking Your Ear podcast at gmail.com. Check out our website, www.dynamicworksproductions.com, soon to be the new home slash area of how you get to it for uh, the Fork in Your Path, an actual play RPG podcast. As soon as iTunes stops fucking dicking with lips in, um, and uh, you can tweet at me, Tim underscore T, and uh, Buster Knuckle thirteen. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Buster Knuckle thirteen. It's Buster Knuckle one three on Twitter. Got it. And uh, yes, and yeah. Buster Lister one one three. Yeah. You want to play some? Okay. You want to play some Destiny? We can play some Destiny. Let's go, baby. Yeah, there you go. All right, uh, until next time, Fork family, get forked. Just ham! And be out. Thank you for listening to a Dynamic Works production podcast. You can find our podcast at www.dynamicworksproductions.com. Feel free to email us at dynamicworks at mac.com. of Guybrush Street, but you're listening to a Dynamic Works production podcast. The Citadel, Arrival, is the first installment in a series of epic science fiction short stories reminiscent of the Pulp Fiction style. It's a fast-paced story that will take you through twists and turns that you will not expect, until they are thrust upon you with all the force, excitement, and chaos of a plasma cannon blast. The story follows Katarl, a nobody cog in the working wheels of a futuristic society run completely by Megacorp, a corporation that carefully runs and manages the lives of the people living under its sphere of power. On one of Katarl's few and far between days off from work, an outing he had hoped would be fun and relaxing turns into an explosive adventure that drags him kicking and screaming into situations and challenges that will make him question every aspect of his life. Watch this colorful tapestry unfurl as Katarl and his newfound allies find their way through this classic, yet oddly surprising tale of good and evil, where nothing is quite what it appears to be. That's The Citadel Arrival by author Tim K. A. Trotter, available right now on Amazon Kindle Store and iTunes iBookstore for only $2.99. Hello. You. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. Ugh. I am not doing so great. Why? What's up? I think I'm sick. Uh, started started going into quick decline last night. So, got some hot tea here though, so I'll power through. All right. Ugh. How's your How's your? I guess it's really afternoon for you, isn't it? Yeah. How's your morning and? whatnot.
Good man. Yeah. Um, did RNG offer the uh, the guest the third seat? Yeah, that I was heard, vacant. I heard about that. Yeah, well, you read it. <laughs> You're well, on the Discord. You saw it. Oh, and he was talking to me about it too. Ah. Uh, so that's cool. My ass. Uh, all right. <clears throat> it all showed up here. Let's see. Um. Okay. Okay, one more drink. Jesus Christ. Mm. Fucking throat. And I think what's worse is it feels like feels like one of those extremely like isolated things, like it's like in the back of the sinuses and oh, throat yeah. kind of thing. Like the rest of me feels pretty fine. I mean it feels like like, you know. Like when you get sick, like it feels like, you know, yeah, you like know something's like going sick. on, but most of you is fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's isolated. Something up. I'm really hoping it's like a 24 hour thing. Yeah. Because I can't really afford to be sick right now. Nothing's worse than being sick in the summertime. Yeah. I mean, if anything, I'm surprised I didn't get sick sooner because like, like our air quality cleaned up, but like for all of August, you know, people couldn't breathe. People were getting emphysema. Um, I know uh, an older couple, uh, the male, he got a he got a heart condition because of this fucking Ugh. ash or whatever. Brutal. He's on some drugs to handle it, but it's like Jesus, like that's how bad it was. Yeah, you need to breathe. Yeah. You know. So brutal, man. It is. It is. I mean, it's better now, but. Mm -hmm. There's still, I don't know, I think we're probably, until we get rain again, um, it's probably going to be in our air for a while, mm -hmm. regardless. So. Well, all the rain you didn't get, we got yesterday. Yeah. I mean, we've had rain maybe twice this summer, and yeah. it's been for like a few hours. Dude, it was torrential last night. I, I was driving up to go to the, mov to go to the movies, and it was, I, I had zero visibility. Like if I if I didn't know how to drive, I would we would have been fucked. Oh, uh, see, yeah, that's that's just normal. <laughs> just, mm -hmm. That's just normal for us up here. <laughs> yeah, or over here, I guess I should say. Lateral. Yeah, <laughs> laterally, laterally normal. So. All right, um, let's kick off the show. Um, I'm I'm actually sitting on the couch, but I, oh. actually, and actually, now that I look over on my desk my usual spin ring is not there so i'll just let you choose well, the topics how about that yeah, sure i mean we could just freestyle and talk it's not a big deal yeah i mean that's true as well all right <clears throat> here we go mm -hmm. cut in <laughs> <laughs> 